This is the Gore Club Podcast with Steve Vessel, Derek Sturgeon, and Death Metal Dave. Like I get like it. Don't make those noises. I'm making in the microphone. Yeah, don't ever make those noises. It's awful. Like an old lady gumming a dick. Ooh. That's uh, what it sounded like. Happy birthday, dear. Granny gonna <laughs> suck <laughs> that cock. <laughs> I'm gonna go milk grandma. I'll be right back. <laughs> if you would have caught me in 1960, I still had my chompers. Uh, <laughs> did okay. you hang out at Jim Porter's I, a lot? Yeah. <laughs> Those, those porcelain uh, teeth against your dick. Jim Porter is, is a fucking like Cooper really Jim. shitty blues band <coughs> palace. What the fuck? That place is huge. It's, it's gone. gone. I know. That's what it is. It's gone. I know that. I'm just it's, saying. It's a. They uh, shut down right when you were about to age into it. Jesus, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. oh, man. You're like three years from being a regular, and then you shut the fuck down. So. Oh, man. <sighs> like, the Gore Club podcast was going to be the Jim Porter's podcast. Oh, yeah, we're going to do it in the basement. <laughs> we're like, let's talk about let's talk about Golden Girls and John Wayne. <laughs> oh, my God. Well, uh, hey. Murder, well, she wrote. Out of the, yeah, let's, let's Golden Girls and Murder, she wrote. Fuck John Wayne. I mean, but if you're going to go to Jim Porter's, you just have to go all in. You got to change yeah. your life. Yeah. Every change forever. I don't want to. No, I don't want to do this for an hour. <laughs> you don't have to talk about Jim Porter's. <laughs> Jim Porter's. I don't want to talk about and, Jim Porter's for an hour. Be, you know, be you know what we could talk about? Trimmers? Trimmers. Trimmers. <laughs> the Trimmers series. That's that's arguably better than Jim Porter's. Yeah, but could you imagine how hopping Jim Porter's would be if it opened in perfection? No, oh, man. Oh, my God, yeah. If Actually, get, no, it would be. If be it opened in that town of, like, eight people, they would love that fucking place. It would just be Bert and, uh, uh, yeah, just... And Bert, Bert and Val. Bert, Bert and Val, that's it. Bert and Val. And <sighs> Eric Clapton cover bands every Eric, fucking night. Eric Clapton cover bands at Unknown Henson every two weeks. Ugh, okay. <laughs> Earl would be there. But if you haven't Probably. figured it out yet, which maybe you haven't because we're just rambling, we are talking about the Trimmer series today. Hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, it's, so, <laughs> welcome to the Gore Club Podcast. <laughs> I'm Steve. Death Metal Dave. Derek. Derek's a birthday boy. Yes, he is. Yeah. He's, it's my birthday. We're not going to tell you how old he is. I spent, uh, you know, right at midnight, I was watching Trimmers 5, <clears throat> so... The first minutes of like my uh, new age here, I was watching Trimmers. Yeah, oh. way way to ring it in. That's not my fault. Oh, we'll get. I'm not mad about it. You're not mad about it. It's gonna be like there's gonna be shockingly less bitching on this one than there was on the Rob Zombie one. I think it's probably gonna make people mad. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what's different? <laughs> oh, I, that I don't hate any of these films. No, oh, wow. I love big and I like ridiculous. the series. Yeah, uh, the series is surprisingly really good. Did not watch it. Fuck, Dave. I looked into it. You know what homework uh, means? The well, word yeah, homework. I watched all homework. six Trimmers films this week. It? Oh, man. Now, there's <laughs> he, only like seven six. movies, six movies. There's no, six there's movies. six, and we have good timing on this because there is another one, and we can get to that towards the end. Fuck yeah. Uh, but let's let's go into <clears throat> Trimmers 1. Yeah, Trimmers I, 1. I feel like a lot of people tuning into this are going to remember Trimmers because it came on TV all the fucking USA, time. USA, every time. USA, it was unavoidable. One and two. No, oh, yeah. Only one, but one and two would play... All the fucking time back in the day. Yeah. So, like, if you're tuning in right now, once we get into this, you're like, oh, yeah, I remember those movies. <laughs> Especially part two. Because part two, when I watched it, I remembered how often it came on TV when we got, like, midway through it. I, I was think, like, oh, yeah, they did play this shit yeah, all the time. Absolutely. I remember the first one more than any of them. Well, uh, of course. The poster from the first one. It's a pretty iconic poster. You see it. You, it is. You've got Kevin Bacon standing there with. And it's also one of those movies that's really strange because, you know, I love big giant monster movies and I love the 50s feel and all that kind of shit. But it's also every one of them, I can, except for a couple of scenes, are all shot. It's all the daytime. It's all daytime monster movies. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they no. get away with all the violence because we talked about this on our PG-13 episode is that. All the blood, the monster blood's like orange. It is orange. All, yeah, yeah absolutely. everything's all orange. Everything's blows blood up blood and it's gushies and everybody yeah. gets covered in shit, you know, but it's all orange. And in every, in every movie, vagina, there's, you're just waiting for the scene where there's somebody, <laughs> there's, a, there's a whole crew of people on the side behind the camera waiting to throw shit at Michael yeah. Gross. Yeah, it's just yeah. these giant dick monsters. Yeah, but the first one is, is, has Kevin Bacon in it. Kevin Bacon yes. and Fred Ward are your stars of the Fred first Ward, one. Fred Ward, man. Fuck yeah. Which is awesome because that's like, I mean, each one of these movies is essentially a buddy cop movie set in the Wild West. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. the, the, they, they stick to this formula of old man and young annoying guy. That's what every single one of these does. 
Uh, the first one, of course, has like the all-star cast, I guess you could say, because they got Kevin Bacon, Fred Ward, uh, Michael Gross, who goes on at the time was what the dad from Family Ties. Yeah, that was his big thing, which is kind of awesome because he's known from Family Ties. And now he's just like this hillbilly that has all of his guns who I mean, honestly, we love, but we would probably not like in real life. You know, it's one of those oh, weird things when you look well, at this character and like, those, you probably, like, I don't know if I'd get along with that guy in the real world, no, but no, no, definitely. Uh, he loves the Atlanta Hawks. Absolutely. Yeah. He, does, he, he really loves the Atlanta Those Hawks. Hot, I was yeah, trying to. He always I, wears the hat. Yeah, yeah. I looked. Yeah. I looked to see, see how much a hat like that it's worth, and you just can't find them. No, you can't because you know why? Graboids fucking ate them all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then the, our other cast members, we got Reba McIntyre. Reba motherfucking McIntyre. Which is a big thing because that's how I got my dad to watch a horror film. It's because of Reba? Because of Reba. <laughs> Yeah. He was a big country, country fan. He just, I was oh, like, Reba yeah, McIntyre's totally in sense. it. That, that, that totally makes sense. We had Rebo. You had uh, what was that that dude's name? He's in uh, he's the dad from uh, Three Ninjas. Oh, and, uh, I mean, Big Trouble Little China. Big Trouble Wong. Little China. Yeah. I, I love calling him the dad yeah, from Three Ninjas. Though. Yeah, Big Chen. Victor Wong. Yeah, Victor Wong yeah. rules, and he it, does. It sucks if yeah. You know, if you haven't seen the movies, then you should not be listening to this. And I feel like it's like a commentary on a movie. Like fucking go watch the movie. Yeah, go watch the movie because we're gonna kind of break these down. But yeah, this is totally just like your your buddy cop movie. Kevin Bacon plays like your young hip cute guy Fred, Fred Ward's <laughs> yeah. like your old guy that's just sick of everybody's shit and then you have your side characters which is like you know Bert and uh, I don't know what Reba's name was in it but Dave it wasn't Dave's, Heather wasn't yeah. I like it that we just watched the fuck out of these movies yeah well, it's like my, a, well yeah. the first one's so far like back in my head yeah. now because I watched the whole five other movies yeah, that, all was, in order. that was like that was like Saturday Steve yeah. <laughs> oh my god <laughs> But uh, the first thing, uh, the first thing I noticed when I put it back in is how awful uh, Kevin Bacon is with a hammer. Just go back and watch it. Yeah, he's I don't, trying, I don't know how he has the job. He's, he's trying like for five minutes to hit a fucking nail. This is like, how does this guy have a job as a handyman? He should have used his dick. He, I guess he could have. Big enough. Well, I, I saw Hollow Man. Good point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for bringing that up, Steve. <laughs> I'm just saying it was animated dick. I always this one. Uh, they make the characters really not intelligent. I know this is the first time we're supposed to see the graboids, but a lot of the shit we see in this is just like mind boggling. Uh, one of my favorite kills in it was uh, let me look at his name, Nestor. It's the father of like the annoying kid that comes back later oh, in the God, series. Yeah. But they're like Nestor, the get landlord. the high ground, and he runs to a tire. So we've all established that you need to climb to like a roof or somewhere high. He runs to a tire, and he doesn't even stand on the tire. He lays in it like he's tubing. <laughs> <laughs> That's why his butt is hitting yeah, the I fucking sand. And then he wonders why. You see his face. Like, you can tell by looking at his face. He's wondering why he's dying. That's how stupid he was. Like, you know why you you're dying. You gotta have that character. There's a giant sandworm, and you jumped on a tire. He forgot about the hole in the tire. Well, have you seen Piranha? Him and fucking Pogo Stick Girl from Jurassic Park. Oh, my God, yes, I know. Which, by the way, I don't know the actress's name, but we were talking about stars in this. Uh, she went on, like, what, three years later mm -hmm. to Jurassic Park? Yeah, so. a lot Ariana, of recognize Ariana Richards. There we go, Ariana Richards. Thank you, Dave. And, uh, You're welcome. <laughs> and, and that, like, everybody's like, hey, be quiet, be quiet. And she's like, no, I'm, I'm a Pogo Stick. Fuck it. <laughs> Giant sandworms, she come was here. Listening, she was listening to her Walkman. She couldn't hear anybody. Oh, yeah. I know how loud those Walkman headphones are. Those yeah. $5 you, Walkman. The foam <laughs> that stays like an inch yeah. off your head. She can't hear people screaming at her in the desert where there's no other sounds. And this the, the interesting thing about this movie is that we were taught, we touched on it a little bit earlier. It's like they, all the blood was, was orange. So oh, yeah. they got away with a PG-13 rating. All of them. And re, re, no, not, well, one of them was PG. But rewatching them, uh, like I thought maybe I, because I bought the Trimmers 6 disc set to rewatch him and I thought maybe I got a censored version because mm -hmm. they definitely mouth the word motherfucker twice yeah. and they say mother humper so that was science it was weird it there was just go. really weird I thought I'd science of ratings yeah yeah I mean that, that, that you could tell how they dumbed it down to get at that PG-13 rating yeah, it's all like all the kills are like just straight swallows too. Like you never see it like decapitate anybody or cut anyone in half. It's usually like go right into its mouth and then it fucking swallows you and that's it. Or it yeah. like sucks a whole car down. Or, or you I think see a it, shoe or you see or like, a shoe. Yeah. Or the first like dead body you see in the entire series is the guy that's on like the uh, the line pole. You know, oh, he's yeah. yeah. He's, he's up there like, hey, dumbass, come on down. Which is weird because what, what's the population of this town? This town's called Perfection, by the way. Uh, maybe 12 people. Yeah, it and, seems like it. And there's this giant tower. It's probably the only giant tower in the whole area. And there's one guy that's been stuck on it. Once they find him, they say four to five days. 
So nobody in four that, to five days. That was days, old Fred. Nobody gave a shit about old Fred. Yeah, they were just like, that motherfucker is fixing the same part of that line. Yeah, they just drove by him every yeah. day. Yeah, and finally Kevin Bacon's like, hey, that doesn't look right. <laughs> I'm yeah, like, he was, yeah, they established he was the, the town guy, drunk. Scarecrow, you know, he was the town yeah. drunk. He was, town drunks do stuff like that. Yeah, I think they do say something like, did he fall asleep on the line again? Or like that shit happens all the time. He just falls asleep holding on to like this electric wire. And a rifle. And a rifle, yeah. And then well, the cop shows up, and they're like, he had to be, uh, he died of dehydration. It had to be at least three to four days. Like, that's weird. Nobody noticed that? And Graboids would sit there for three to four days? Yeah, uh, that's... Which it never happens. They don't the have to explain that, though. It's like fear. It's just fear. It's bullshit fear that we, you know... Yeah. It's like being stuck in, in, in your bedroom, and you think if you move, the monster's going to get you, but he's 50. Yeah. <laughs> and there are monsters. And there really are monsters down there in the sand. Yeah. It's just an interesting way to way to start things off of how ignorant like every character is in this. But then again, like I said, once again, we're in a town. The population can't be no. 12 people. And I can't remember if they so, showed a sign with a population on there or they not. They do. You think they did. In the later movies, okay. it pops up. But I don't think I ever noticed it. There's like, Especially in the, later movies, the one like Back to Perfection, part three. But we'll get to that. Yeah, they definitely show it. I just don't think it's like a, it's mentioned that often. Because I, I was wondering, and we'll go into this later, but I'm like, how does this town breed? <laughs> like the Bible, man. Because we established that this town's been around for a while. Eventually, we do establish that. Yeah. But it's always the same mixture of people, but only like two of each. So yeah. it's always like five white people, an Indian dude, and like an two Asian Latinos guy. and an yeah. Asian guy. Yeah. And I'm like, how are they? What's happening here? They keep that same <laughs> exact amount of people. And that, that's one of the things that they the actually were, were just praised about, about yeah. that film is that, that how the divisive the, uh, the cast was. Yeah, I think first time it was like what, 1990. So. Diverse, I think is the word. Oh, sorry, yeah, not divisive. <laughs> I'm thinking of America right now. <laughs> divisive. I, I, read, I read that. And divisive. I, I read that and I started thinking about it while I was watching. And I'm like, yeah, it is, I guess. But they just none of them are on, nobody's on screen besides the whiteies the whole time. <laughs> I mean, yeah, sure. Like a bunch every, of whiteies on screen. I mean, everyone else is there to die essentially. Oh yeah, I mean that's a horror film. But you have all the white people live. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't they? I can't he's, argue that when it's no, true. He's, he's absolutely it's true. Right. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, besides maybe like just your side character. No, like no, Nesta, Miguel, Susan Miguel, Chang. Miguel lives. Uh, well, we'll get to that. I later. like the day you're so excited. Yeah, Susan Chang comes in like in, in three or, or two or three. I think it's in three, and then she takes you know, she she uh, continues under the show. Y no, she doesn't. Oh, she I mean, okay. I thought this uh, the same character. It's the same character. Okay, yeah. But they did a little switcheroo, and it tricked me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure I, I'll have to look that up, but I'm pretty sure it's a different woman. I'm like, man, you guys went hard on that. But yeah, they kept, I, I think that out of all these movies, because what I was getting to with the whole buddy cop thing, every single one of these, you have the old guy who's just like fed up with life, has been shit on forever. And you have like this young idiot. And like Kevin Bacon's supposed to be kind of the young idiot. Oh, this yeah. One. He's a sexy man. And it's. It's an interesting dynamic, and I think the first one has the best like chemistry between the two. Fred Ward and Kevin Bacon are great together. They are so fucking great. Because the dialogue, even just them riding in the truck or going back and forth, yeah. like it, it doesn't seem forced at all like it does in the later movies. And keep in mind, I do like all these movies, but yeah. once we get to like Jamie Kennedy or part two, Grady, I just like <laughs> it seems like they're trying really hard. Whereas this one was more of a natural fit between the two. Yeah, they brought back paper, rock, scissors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I knew it. The paper, rock, scissors things was great. Yeah, yeah. About everything. And the end game with the trimmers, you know, of course, these graboids are just murdering the shit out of everyone. And we just discover like, oh, yeah, concrete walls will fuck them up. Yep. It's just the most brilliant thing. I mean, there's, there's machine guns everywhere, fucking cannons. But yeah, you got to talk about Bert because this really, if you think about trimmers, it's just the story arc of Bert. He's the only consistent. Yeah. Well, in the first two. And he's a side character that yeah i wish like technically it, it would be awesome if any other franchise tried that like you know like a friday the 13th somebody that's just like the third friend in the group by like the third movie by the third like the, movie the, the he's the star final girl or main person yeah because i don't think i've seen any other horror franchise do that take a character that's just a side character which just might have just been michael gross is the only one willing to keep signing contracts is probably what it was at that time he had nothing else going on yeah, nothing else i mean you're the dad from family ties so yeah. we're giving your bert now motherfucker enjoy it, it i think as far as he was concerned he was done i mean especially by the time uh, the third one came out i don't know why i keep going to that one because it came out in like 2001 he was just like fuck it yeah 
And he's looked 55 since like 79. <laughs> like, go watch Family Ties. He looks older in that than he does in Tremors back to perfection. Yeah, he's the, he's the Patrick Stewart of Tremors. It's good, like, because you go that, you know, 20 years, you look old, but then finally, like, it catches up and you look young. It's weird. Like, you look younger than your age now, Michael Gross. <laughs> when you were 27, you look 52, but now that you're 55, you still look 52. Reverse aging. There's still hope, Steve. Thanks. Fuck you're both of you still guys, hope. man. What? How did I get involved in that? <laughs> I'm just fucking off to the side trying to give Michael Gross some compliments. So, we, so well, let's talk about uh, the people who actually created this real quick. Uh, S.S. Uh, Wilson and was it James uh, Maddock? I think I think that their names. They cre- they created the company, um, and they actually are the ones that stayed with it all the way until now. Yeah, so they did the last one, right? They or I thought I saw okay, they, all, they both wrote. I think almost all of them, and they, okay. after a while there, they were swapping off directing duties, except for the first one, which is Ron Underwood. Um, I'm looking at my whiteboard of doom over here, and uh, yeah, it's um, what is it? There's so many fucking names I put up on this damn thing. I know. Sometimes you just put so much shit there. I'm like, how am I supposed to decipher all this? <sighs> Sometimes I don't know either. It's just but, like bacon, uh, Apollo 13. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right. That comes up in part two. Let me two. fucking figure that out, buddy. Yeah. Uh, but they, they are the ones that uh, they started this whole thing off, the, the idea, and they've been working together since the, they were young. They both did like uh, short circuit together. They did city slickers. Um and all these little movies. Batteries not included. Batteries not included. Ghost Dad. Yeah. I which in retrospect is pretty fucking scary. True. Yeah, it's like you don't want that guy to be a ghost that can sneak up on you. Fuck no. Pluto Nash. I think they part part of that. Uh, I don't know. Don't give them that. Uh, well, Wild Wild just, West. Jesus wicka, wicka, fucking wow. Christ. Wicka, wicka, wow, West. Uh, Mask the Cartoon. There was a mask of the cartoon? Not yeah. mask fucking Rocky Dennis, man. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> Okay, make yourself well. Eric fucking Stoltz. No, mask the, uh, the, like, the, little, the goofy little toys. Green guy, Jim Carrey. The no. awesome toys, actually. No. You're not talking about Jim Carrey? No, no. No, no, no. no. mask the TV show that was a cartoon in the 80s, and it's like, it was like almost like a ripoff of Transformers, but they, they wore masks in their cars. I don't know what kind that is. of like transformed into different fuck man. It was a Transformers ripoff. Jesus Christ! Well, had, not like GoBots and, ripoff. And but they had they had masks. Everything. They had people inside of them. I wish this was See? Rocky Dennis turning into a car. Because I fucking hated that guy. <laughs> oh, what? Poor man. Laura oh. Dern's awesome in that movie. Laura Dern's in that movie. Yeah, she's blind. She's got she's a really long. She's got a really long neck though. Well, I'm not going to make that joke. Yeah, you are. You just did. <laughs> so Tremors too. So we so we get past <laughs> Trimmers one. Well, so <laughs> did we? <laughs> we get so so Trimmers one. So, yeah. Well, I'm a fan of actually the director of the first film, Ron Underwood. He uh, worked on Tourist Trap, which is one of my favorite movies with uh, um, with Dave Schmoer, who we talked about, who's all connected with like uh, Richard Band, Richard Band, and um, not Richard Band, Jesus Charles Band, all that stuff. They, I love that they were all connected through that, and they did City Slickers, Mighty Joe Young, Pluto Nash, which we already talked about. I mean, that's did really do, cool. Did they do Legend of Curly's Gold? God, no. Have you seen that? Up there? Yeah, I've seen that. Okay, carry on. I get around. <laughs> he's, a John, he's a John Lovitz fan. <laughs> All right, God damn it, part two. Part two. Well, yeah, so part one, we already established, you know, they, they figure it out. You know, they have them. It's this weird rat race. They figure it out. We haven't even talked about what they, they do. They have Kevin, but yeah. So they, they, they stand up. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's we're what just, they'll say. Though. We're not high, I promise. Uh, yeah. So Trimmer's one. Uh, the whole time they're trying to figure out fuck. how to fucking kill these things. And, and my favorite is like these things are sucking like cars down and destroying buildings. And the first thing they do is like, oh, we should just run inside. And like, you guys didn't watch what happened outside and you live in a shitty wooden buildings. You right. don't think they're going to rip the fucking floors apart. He's talking about the big market. They all yeah. kind of congregate. Oh uh, yeah. Chang's is it? Chang's something like that. Yeah. yeah. Which keeps pops up in every single one of these movies. Uh, so then they start ripping through the floor and they're like, Oh, we got to go to the roof of places. <laughs> and then the fucking trimmer starts shaking shit, knocking people off things. And finally they're like, Kevin Bacon runs fast. Run, Kevin Bacon. Run, run. And he just fucking runs, and he does that cool ass slide at the end. He's like, Shh, I could have went off the edge, but I got good boots. And it then fucking <laughs> smacks the wall, and that orange, like that that high C that McDonald's discontinued, just starts pouring out these fucking worms, and that's the end of it. Yeah. So there's you, there's Trimmers one. There's you, Trimmers one. You forgot the uh, fishing really with dynamite. Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. The fishing well, with they, dynamite. They part. use dynamite too, uh, like the. Come on, yeah. well, they, yeah, like, God they, damn it, Steve. I can't yeah, even talk throw, tonight. They throw the dynamite out there, they get it to, to swallow it, and then it blows up. And that only worked because in every one of these movies, the third trimmer is always the smartest. The third graboid, I should say. The third. The third graboid is always the smartest. And that's the and, thing is that they, 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 each film, they kind of like become other graboids. Like they... 
Yeah, they evolve, and I, 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 uh, I have the whole evolution of them memorized. So when we get to part three, oh, I'll go, please, I'll, I'll can't go wait. over all that. All right, part two. Uh, so when we have part shots. two, we instantly establish why Val Kevin Bacon is not there. He ran off and got married to the girl he meets in the first one. And one thing you'll notice with trimmers, and this happens in all of them. I figured out this weird fucking trend. It's always the old guy and the young guy, right? Yeah. One of them will always meet a girl in it, and they never come back for the sequel. If you get laid in Tremors, you don't have to do the next movie. Fuck. It's a fact. So this one introduces, because Kevin Bacon's gone now, it introduces Grady. Grady. Now, Grady, I couldn't find anything about this actor other than a credit that says he played Sexy Waiter Scott in Black Swan. So... Like... All the way up to now, he hadn't done that's shit. Just, I mean, there was like little things here and there of like dude God number damn. four, but I thought his best credit was Sexy Waiter Scott. In Sexy Black Waiter Scott. Scott. And, that's and the it, one you picked out. In the fact, for such like an Oscar winning type of movie that there's a credit for somebody named Sexy Waiter Scott makes me pretty fucking happy, actually. <laughs> like, what, what should, we, should we name this character? Sexy. Sexy Waiter Scott. Yeah. What is he? Well, he's a waiter. What else is he? Well, he's sexy. He's sexy. What else is he? Looks like a Scott. <laughs> he looks like a Scott. <laughs> Sexy way to Scott. Makes perfect now, sense. Now, the production on Aftershock started in 93, actually. They were trying to get that going a little bit earlier and didn't come out until 96. Okay, and before we jump into it, can you explain Bacon Apollo 13 that you have right there? Is that why he didn't do it? Is yes. that why it's yeah, there? He, okay, Reba about McIntyre did not come back because she was going to go on a large tour. Fancy. Rock and roll country, whatever. And then uh, Kevin Bacon decided to do Apollo 13, which, as they said earlier, good for him. That's good probably, for him. probably a better idea. I don't know. In retrospect, maybe, I mean, it, look how far this took Michael Gross, and look where Kevin Bacon's at now, so, eh. Yeah, that's pretty funny how he came back to the series. Yeah, he, he missed out on like $47 at least. By not doing this. <laughs> and that was another thing. Everyone for part two, uh, they, they were not kind of trying to make it, because part one was not a hit. It was not a hit at all. It made, yeah, it bombed. Yeah, it bombed. It was number five. It wasn't awful, but it, did, it barely made its, uh, its actual budget back, which that probably means it didn't even make its advertisement budget back, but it fucking tripled its money back on VHS and yeah. DVD at the time, or at least VHS, I that, guess, 1990, 91. That's what shocked me to learn about that, because yeah. I always it was a assumed huge hit it was a on hit home video. because it was on TV so much. I assume that it, they're going to play this fucking thing on USA literally once a week. Yeah. They're going to, they they to go rent it, it right? though. But if you see it every fucking week on television, yeah. who the fuck went, goes and rents it? Yeah. I mean, Some Trevor and Lover motherfuckers. Trevor, yeah. And it had to start in early. It couldn't have been two or three years after it came out in yeah. theaters that it was on TV just every fucking day. So- that going back to that is everyone on the production lowered their pay and S.S. Wilson, who actually wrote the first one, directed this one for free. Well, that's nice of him. And that's how they got this movie made. Or that's, that helped. <clears throat> Excuse me. Get, well, the, yeah, that get helps. the movie made. You yeah. tell a fucking production company, hey, I'll do it for free and it'll be straight to DVD. Yeah. And like, what's the story? Well, it's the same story. It's just in a different, Minus bacon. A, different area. <laughs> Not as Kevin Bacon. But we got Fred Ward again. He's got long hair now, and he's obsessed with Playboy Playmates. And he's also an ostrich farmer. And he's an ostrich oh, farmer Oh, yeah, I forgot now. about that. Because yeah. <laughs> this movie sets up a little bit different. So Please tell us, Dave. So Fred Ward is, a, is an ostrich farmer now, and uh, he gets approached by an oil company from Mexico and says, Hey, we got graboids. Why don't you come down here and kill these things? He doesn't want to go, and old Grady shows up and tells him, you know, you should go. And he listens yeah. to this motherfucker. Yeah. This, <laughs> this, this, this fucking dude that shows up and literally just screams, I'm a loser, essentially, because he's like, I'm a taxi driver, and I have nothing to live for. Let's kill Graboids. Not to mention that they're like, hey, the Mexican military will give you any weapon you need, because apparently the Mexican military would rely on it, fucking old-ass Fred Ward instead yeah. of just doing shit. Don't they get paid like 50000 per or something? 50000 per. Or and yeah, a, and yeah. you can choose whatever or, fucking weapon you it, want. Or 100 if it's alive. Yeah, or 100 if you capture it. Yeah, yeah because it always goes back that. to the yeah. capture thing. Yeah, I Every remember movie. The, like, it becomes like a yeah. contest between them and Michael Gross. They capture it. Yeah, well, what happens? And, you know, not voluntary, but Michael Gross is all, and he's like, fuck it. In this one, they get <laughs> I got the, skills, dick. They get to bend the rules a little bit because this is the first one you learn that there's an evolution of the graboid. So this is where you learn that a graboid, when he fully forms, Becomes three shriekers. So you go from being a giant worm to just these three kind of human size, I guess, child size shriekers. And it changes the rules, too, because they're looking for like your body heat rather than 
sound. Like little predators. Yeah. So they're little predators. That's something we didn't touch about on, on the first one yet. Yeah. So, yeah, going back to the first one. Vibrations. We skip sound. that. They look for vibrations and sound when they're grabbed. We're the worst reviewers of so all. So, when time. they're like these giant, <laughs> giant dick McDonald's high sea monsters, they're, they're looking for sound. Yeah. When they become these little fucking goblins, they're looking for your heat. So like there's just so, vibration. I don't think they look for sound. Do I they? Think, yeah, maybe. Yeah, just but, vibration. Vibration. But they can. I don't know. It's weird because they're hitting like little chimes and shit to get them. So I don't know. I guess any sound causes vibration. Yeah. yeah. The, the, the shriekers. They see heat. And the shriekers yeah. look for heat. So yeah. now we and, got yeah. going back to that fifty thousand dollar reward. Originally, <laughs> it's there's they're thinking that there's three of these graboids. So fifty thousand is a hundred thousand. Well, now all of a sudden you have all these shriekers. So these guys are thinking they're going to make like five hundred grand. Uh, Grady's dream is to open like a Graboid theme park. Theme park, yeah, that's what he wants. Uh, because at this point, which it's only, was it three years after? No, six years after Tremors, I guess, but filmed just a couple years later. Yeah. Uh, the story of the Graboids has been huge. It's become like an arcade game. There's like these weird TV shows about it. Fred Ward and Burt and Kevin Bacon, who's no longer in this, besides his cameo on a magazine cover. Uh, <laughs> he probably got yeah. paid for that. Because he invested yeah. his money wisely. Yeah, there's like Graboid magazine and shit with them on the cover, which I don't know how many articles you could put in that, but it's a fucking magazine that's on everybody's wall. And Grady's a fanboy of it, so that's how he shows up. But if you watched any movie in the 90s that was supposed to be like slightly serious but had like a comedy character, you always had this young guy who tried to dress hip that's just the dumbest motherfucker alive. That's actually one of the notes I wrote. Idiot, comic relief, sidekick. Yeah. <laughs> and Grady's that to a T. Just every stereotype you could think of. The goofy hat, like the little leather gloves, all the shit. The bad one-liners. And the one that got me the most, he doesn't know how to play paper, rock, scissors. He doesn't even understand the concept. How the fuck... At I don't know. At this point, he's like, what? It 20, works out for Fred Ward. 28? You've never played Paper, Rock, Scissors? <laughs> he's very sheltered. He didn't have a lot of there friends, wasn't sheltered Derek. enough. I don't what know. What sheltered are you? I think what? I played that was like fucking three. <laughs> yeah, you had ne- friends at three. Yeah, he, yeah. he wasn't. He was oh, homeschooled. I don't even feel like I had friends at three. I think it just people played that. Is it, you know. And then he didn't understand it. Well, this covers what? This covers what? Yeah. But, rock goes through paper. <laughs> rock goes through paper. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, you get the grab, you get the graboids, and they. Uh, the w- one thing they didn't it was really tongue in cheek in the movie. Like you got a little bit more. So the the graboid that eats the radio, and then they're, yeah, they're, they're they're just sitting there like, what's that noise? And you, uh, yeah, you, like hear the, you, you, hear the, you hear the one country song that they paid for <laughs> over and the over. We get the they probably borrowed it. Just, they they, yeah, they, they, they paid a lot of money song. for that. They were going to use God, it. God, I wish it was Reba. Yeah. Yeah. It should have been Reba. And yeah. that's the thing about the effects in this film is that it definitely shows that they didn't have any money. This one's the worst effects wise. I think yeah. out of all of and them, it's the one that decided. The one. Oh my God, I don't even go into yeah. The, the effects are bad. The visual effects are the worst. But they do some fun things with this. I like the remote control car scene a lot. Where he yeah. just comes up with the idea to stand on the rock, drive the car around, that'll get him. And it kind of works. Nice little uh, montage there. And then yeah. when, when they when they turn into what what are the shriekers, that's what they call them. They call them, no wait, yeah, yeah, shriekers. shriekers. They're oh, called yeah. shriekers. You're thinking of part three. We aren't we're not there yeah. yet. Yeah, when they turn into the shriekers, they they multiply by eating. So every time they eat something, you get more shriekers. Right. So that was that was an interesting little twist the, from the beginning, from the first one. So you just got three big big ones, and now you've got they're like little they're like little gremlins yeah. essentially in this one. Like oh they, yeah, there's they, nothing they, original about any of this, eat, but they, it's they how they put it all together. And then Bert shows up. Yeah, and they need help. It's about fucking time. So yeah, what, like I guess we get about forty minutes into the movie. Enter Michael Bert, Gross and. He wears the same hat from Tremors 1 yeah. in this one. So it's not just an Atlanta Hawks hat. It's the exact same Atlanta Hawks hat, which it only makes it to these two films. So I was, I was, I'm following this hat situation very hard. <laughs> and I was like, man, like, I wonder if he just had it sitting around or if the people that directed it had that Hawks hat sitting around. Somebody's a big fan. Because it's a very specific style of hat that you can't really find. Yeah, and I'm all. like, man, he has that fucking I Hawks looked, hat again. But, well, by this time, they're definitely setting the character, though. He's got an, an outfit. He's got a uniform. Yeah, and he's, he's very specific, that. and it's the same. It's essentially the same character. Now he's bitter because he went through a divorce with old Reba. Yeah, so, <laughs> kind of gloss over that for the like longest goes into time. The, the, the in denial. Wrote, so they, they knew they weren't going to get these people. So they they rewrote around that. Oh yeah, yeah. So we get like we we got like two sad old men and Grady because we got Fred Ward's character who I keep not calling him his actual name because I can't remember. But we have Fred Ward's Earl. character Earl. How the fuck could I forget that Earl and Bert? Two sad dudes looking for love instead of killing graboids <laughs> and dealing with little pricks that don't know how to pay paper, rock, scissors. 
But yeah, this and this is Fred Ward's last stand too. This is the last one we get Earl, Earl in yeah. because guess what? He gets laid. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you connected all of this. This so, is great. So if the first time he's introduced, when they come into his uh, Earl's trailer to get home, there's a Playmate calendar up. And he's like, that's uh, Miss 1974 and blah, blah, blah. You know, he talks about he's been jerking off to the same poster for 20 fucking years, I guess. That's probably why you're single, Earl. But later on, they meet a little blonde lady and they go on this whole adventure with her. And I'm, I'm kind of spoiling the end of the movie, but we'll, we'll kind of backtrack. I just want to stick to this whole like you have sex and you leave Tremors franchises. You don't have sex and die. You just don't yeah. come back. But they're sitting on a roof at the end and he's just like, you think I can take you on a date sometime? And she's like, yeah. And he goes, you used to model or something. I don't think exactly how that went, but modeling. I just like the, the way you're signing your and voice. And she's it's like, great. she's like, I was a playboy playmate. And he looks at her and he's like, who? And she's like, October 74 and he's like oh shit and then she does this weird pose and it clicks with him like he can only the understand same pose in the that it's the same girl well. <laughs> she does that pose like he can't recognize your face but if you fucking put that butthole up in the air he's like that's that girl <laughs> yeah. well I mean he stared at that butthole for fucking 20, 20 years. years he's like his hands got pretty fucking pasty oh, from that calendar yeah. god damn it that's a small. What was her name, dear? Uh, uh, oh. Dave. Duh, Derek. Yeah, because she was like she got brought in as like the sidekick. Well, for she the was group in this one. Uh, what was uh. it? Mel's Diner in the in the eighties. She's actually in uh, uh, the Devil's Rejects. Yeah, um, Helen Shaver. Yes, yes. And also, yeah, due to this one not taking place in the town that we referenced earlier, Perfection, none of the other characters came back. It was kind of an easy way to write them off, too, to not bring back any of the cast that no, survived. It's cheaper. Because, you know, all, all the white people survived. And Miguel. All the white people and Miguel <laughs> <laughs> fucking survived the first movie. Uh, Aftershocks all takes place in Mexico. Uh, they're all just essentially trying to collect this bounty. And it's this weird. It becomes this weird competition between uh, Earl, Bert, and I guess Grady's tag team partners were Earl. So yeah. they go together. Originally, it was uh, going to be filmed in Australia. And then since like production, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We already talked about the budget a hundred times. They just said, fuck it. Yep. Fuck it. Yep. <laughs> you know, you still don't have any cool kills. And now even these things can't really, uh, these things can't swallow people. So you can't write it that way. You got by with it with just graboids because they can just swallow people. You don't have to be yeah. like, oh, there's blood. These actually kind of stab and bite and chew. But we always see the aftermath of it. Every now and again, you get like a decapitated head or an arm laying around, some shit like that. But mm. And this movie further establishes Bert being a badass because... When he spoilers, when he comes back from his from his patrol <laughs> and his deuce and a half, and it's all his what <laughs> deuce and a half from the truck, <laughs> it's all it's all eaten up, and he's 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 beaten, he's blood well bloody trimmer's blood, and he's just sad he's because tangy. he doesn't have any bullets. That's all he's sad about. Yeah, he's out of bullets. Well, fuck yeah, that's all he cares about, and he feels vulnerable. And it's the first time you see him vulnerable in this film series, but we'll get to more of that. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll to, I, I love how you keep saying we'll get to that. Well, this really is. It's fun talking about this because this is like right now we're just kind of casually mentioning Bert, but eventually we're going to say Bert so many times you're going to fucking turn us off because he's he becomes Bert, Bert, Bert. he's the man. Yeah. Eventually the whole thing just revolves yeah, uh, around this character. Val and Earl. Going, yeah, exactly. And, you know, Val and Earl and now Earl's kind of final thing in this one is uh, finally they decide they, they lock all the shriekers. So there's this Bert has this truck full of like every piece of dynamite you could fucking imagine because he's Bert. And MREs. <laughs> and, yeah. And all the shriekers get in this room. So it's like this giant, like little, I guess not giant warehouse, but a small warehouse, this truck with all these explosives and shit. And all these shriekers are in there and there's food in there. So they lock them in at first. I'm like, oh, we got them. And they're like, oh, shit. No, they're eating. They're multiplying. So at this point, there's like 50 fucking shriekers in this thing. And Fred Ward is like, oh, I'll go in and we'll just blow the fucking truck up. He doesn't say fuck because it's a PG-13 movie, but I'm going to make him say fuck because he should have said fuck. <laughs> and they, they they spray him with a fire extinguisher, two people, because he won Paper, Rock, Scissors. They spun it back. Him uh. and Grady play. But it's funny because he loses Paper, Rock, Scissors, but Grady's still a fucking idiot and thinks that he won. So Bert, not Bert, uh, Earl goes in. But the whole ending of this fucking movie is Earl covered in fucking... Fire extinguisher, whatever the shit you call that. What do you call that? I don't know. Icing? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking fire icing? They, CO2? They, they, CO2? They spray him with fire, oh with fire extinguisher. Fire, <laughs> I fire wish icing. it was icing. Like, God damn it. They, sp they spray him with the shit that Earl was making to that calendar in his trailer. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's never going away. I love it. Go ahead. Carry on. But he walks through. like There's hundreds of them. They can't know us because once again, they're looking for heat. 
He gets to this truck, sets the timer, but he fucks up and he's like, oh shit, I got like 30 seconds and they take off. And this scene's brilliant. I'm not spoiling it for people. It's fucking funny because this really brings out Bert. Uh, They're running (laughs) and they run like 50 yards away and get behind a wall. And you see Bert, he's just still fucking going. He's like, not far (laughs) enough. And they run another 50 yards and he's like, keep going. (laughs) And they finally like find this fucking ditch, which like Bert like dives in and everyone else just casually goes in. And Grady, who's got to be the fucking idiot, is like, what the fuck? What is happening? (laughs) And then, like, a door explodes and knocks him over, which I wish would have fucking killed him. God, I was hoping the same thing. It would have been rated R. You will, too, when you watch the movie, guys. Yeah, if that would have been, like, that Final Destination ending. You remember the end of the first Final Destination (sighs) where the guy's like, I told you to stay away from me, and that fucking light falls on him? Yeah. God, I wish that was Grady. (laughs) Perfect. And if you're, like, 20, you're going to love Grady. It's fine, but... If no, I don't think they will. I think a lot of people do. My kids, my kids love them. Yeah, but they're not 20. That's true, but I feel like 14 to 20. No offense. Yeah. They're just similar. One of the things I actually did write down on the old whiteboard is that one of the things they did to uh, save money is for the infrared actors all wore red suits and yellow socks. That's how much fucking they tried to save money with this goddamn movie. Huh. Yeah. That's smart. Like, like, like Predator Vision, you know? I that, could that was that. one of the things that stuck out of me. I was like, what the fuck? Yeah, I wouldn't notice that unless yeah. I was really. And then they for filmed it. it in like high eight, I think. And there you go. Yeah, that's it. That, Money. I mean, that, that, that's aftershocks, which is another one. You know, I don't think it played as much, but I remember those commercials for it. Trimmers to aftershocks, aftershocks. like constantly. That remote control car scene and the final scene is great. It's not as good as the first one, but for a low budget sequel, it's fucking fun. That man. movie cost four million dollars compared to what was the first one? I think it was like. 10, maybe? I don't know. Dave has the uh, internet in front of him. Yeah, let's see. Let's see. We'll get to that. But uh, let's get on to Back to Perfection. Back to Perfection, which... Budget was 11. 11. 11, so we cut the budget almost one third. Right. Uh, yeah, then we go to Back to Perfection, which uh, I remember watching this. It took this. forever to them to yeah, even get to make it. It came a, out in 2001. Yeah, yeah, it's a PG movie, too. Oh, wow. Back to Perfection They're is... really trying to get any kind of dime they can out of this fucking thing. I would have to go back, I feel like that was pretty uh, intense. Uh, man, maybe not. Maybe there's no real big kills in that one. Uh, that one, you know, Back to Perfection, that title, I always wondered what that was when I first watched them back in the day. Like, what do you mean perfection? You don't like, realize the name of the, the fucking t- town. It's the fucking town. Yeah. Like, because I didn't, these other sequels, I didn't really go back and watch until recently. Actually, like, I never watched the prequel, which we'll get to later. I watched five once and never saw six. So this is really the last one I kind of saw consistently. That's I guess. exactly where I'm at. And this one brings back, uh, so we were talking about earlier how a lot of characters weren't in part two. This brings back every side character, pretty much, from part one, outside of Reba, Kevin Bacon, and now Fred Ward's gone because he got laid. (laughs) Uh, Now we got, now we just got our main character, who's now been upgraded, Michael Gross. Bert is now our main man. He's our main man, and the movie begins in, a, in, in with 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 Bert being interviewed, interviewed on the news. Yeah, he's interviewed uh, on the news. Well, because at this point, like, Gry boys are every, yeah, you know, it's well, it's a worldwide phenomenon. Well, Everyone knows about it. Yeah, so he takes an he has an AA gun strapped to the back of his car, <laughs> and it's bothered me because he's got infrared go- he's like night vision goggles, and he's shooting an AA gun while looking out of the night vision goggles. Give me explain what the, what you mean by that. I'd be fucking blind. That's what okay, I'm saying. I know, but not everyone understands like what you're talking about. <laughs> so it was yeah, whatever. But the, yeah, it goes. It's 11 years after it's after science the science fiction, Dave. Uh, it's 11 years after the original, I believe. Uh, or it's yeah, it's, it's exactly 11, 11 years. Yeah, They're 11 years. It a few times. And uh, so everything there's like a trimmers, you know, or graboid sideshows, and like you're saying, like everybody knows about it. There's now. a gift shop. There's a gift shop. You can it, buy little graboid it, it, things. Yeah, if you if you look at that gift shop on the on the table, like the the front desk, there's graboids like toys. They look like dildos. It looks like just a big old line of graboid dicks. It's true. I love it. You can probably I would get, totally probably buy a fucking wish. graboid yeah. vibrator. I'm almost certain they bought dildos and painted them for that scene. Oh, they, yeah. they look like dicks. Or like old Dune toys. Because they look like Dune. It looks like a set <laughs> those of, didn't sell. Like a set of like why does the graboid have balls? <laughs> Because they're, they're sitting down, and they have, like, a stand, and they're going up. That's I've a total ripoff of every fucking you know, alien I, I, toy they could get a hold of. I didn't want to go back and watch this movie ever again, but now I guess I will. Go back and watch it. Don't and be make, afraid of fucking dicks, man. That gift shop seems pretty fucking early. And uh, also, with this one, Bert now getting a main role. Uh, 
he doesn't have his fucking hat from the first two. I know. I didn't understand that either. He has Atlanta Hawks hat, but it's a different it's one. It's totally, still an Atlanta Hawks hat. It pisses oh, me that's the fuck, a fuck It's like a hockey mask from part five. And we, like, what are you doing? And we established later that he's not even a fan of the Atlanta Hawks, which is kind of uh, weird. That's sad. It's okay. Sad. But, you know, it's it's been 11 years. Maybe he lost the hat. Maybe it was fucked up. It's been, you know, it's been through hell and back. No. <laughs> You can't. <laughs> it's been through hell and back. Well, he does get buried in the was it the second one, and they have to cut him out with a chainsaw. Uh, this is this one, right? Back. Oh, is it? Okay. Is it, is it the uh, second one or back to perfection? I thought that where was he gets the second swallowed? one. God it, damn it, Steve! I don't know. It feels like it was back to perfection where he gets swallowed because it's uh yeah because this is the one where he has his hope for it. Yep, you're right. A, you're right. You're right. Right. He has his place set up. God damn it! I was trying to make. I was trying to explain it, but. Fuck it. You fucked up, man. Oh, I always fuck up. And who was the side? There's a sidekick in this one, too, and I can't remember who the fucking sidekick was. He, was, I didn't give a fuck Jack about Jack Sawyer. This. Oh, yeah, Jack Sawyer. But guess what happens to Jack in this one? He fucks Suzanne Chang. And he doesn't come back. And he never comes back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the introduction to Susan Chang and Charlotte Stewart. Yep. Uh, if you're a fan of David Lynch movies, you've seen Charlotte Stewart in all the Twin Peaks, all the series. She's in fucking Eraserhead. I love her to death. She's actually in like, uh, what was it, Little House in the Prairie when I was a kid. That's how I remember. And I was like, what the fuck? We bring back the girl from Jurassic Park, right? This is the one that brings yeah. it. Yeah. And we bring back Melvin, that f- who didn't God fucking matter it. in the first one. We, you didn't even hear us talk about the first one. But if you remember me talking about the dad that gets sucked in the tire, this is his son who's yeah. equally just a fucking Melvin idiot. sucks. And he's kind of a pointless character in the first one. I don't even know if he has more than two lines. That fucking actor sucks. I hate yeah. that kid. But this one, he pops up, and now he's like kind of this rich prick that's trying to buy um, pretty much what's left of this town of perfection. He's trying to buy like all the real estate so he can resell it and make it like a neighborhood, which who the fuck would do that? Doesn't even make sense, but. I don't know. It'd be great for mall. They actually explain it in the movie. He's like, oh, it'd be great over here to fucking build this and this and this. And there's billboards of him, which I didn't know there was a billboard in perfection. Yeah, I don't remember that in any of the movies, but it's the upgrade, man. You yeah, have money it, now because of the gift shop. I love because his billboard. So Bert runs into him and then Melvin's a total dick. Bert doesn't even remember him, which makes me so happy because it's only 11 years ago. You just experienced this traumatic event with this dude. Yeah. And he's just like, Bert's just like, who the fuck are you? You know how many grab I've killed since I've seen you? you right. <laughs> <laughs> but then like. And he has his, like his, uh, what's his fucking side hustle he's got going on with the guy who pulls all the fucking fences down in that one. Yeah. Oh yeah. This one. Was, okay. Yeah. yeah. So it, it's like a. He, he's not going back to that. There's yeah, Jack. So Jack's the and Jack's the new Grady. So we get Jack, <laughs> but he's he's actually cool. He's he is cool. He's like he's a way better. So character. if you take yeah, Val, if you take Val from part one and Grady, and they fuck and make a baby, you, you never have see him Jack. again. You, you, know, you won't say him again in the sequel, but you'll see their baby. Jack, Jack's, Jack's got that rough, the rough edges of Kevin Bacon from the first one and the stupidity of Grady from the second one. Uh, they're running this like hustle where he's essentially, Graboids have become a tour thing, which we mentioned earlier with the dildos. Uh, <laughs> so he's got this Jeep that he drives around. He throws like five people in it. And he I has love a, that these, this is Derek's episode. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to let you fly oh, with this shit. Dude. I love it. No, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> he has, he, he has this buddy that's trying to look as like punk rock and as scummy as possible. that just drinks forties and he hides off to the side. And every time like this truck with the tourist pass by, he'll make a Jack will be like, Oh, there's trimmers over here. And a dude will shoot off like the fire extinguisher, which no longer which shoots is, out. Which is fire icing. Yeah, but yeah. you pay me in 40s, yeah. I'll take well, care yeah. of that and shit. It, it's no longer fire icing or Earl's Calm, it's brown stuff now. <laughs> and so, so it looks like dirt going everywhere. So you think graboids are coming. And then they pull down the fence. So every time like you're faking people out, which of course, if you've ever seen a horror movie, you know how this goes. Yeah. The second time they do it, graboids actually show up. Everybody thinks it's fake. And it's the most annoying goddamn group of tourists. I've ever heard of them? They're just all just big. The one just keeps trying to take pictures. Like, oh my God, my camera. And everyone else is like, oh, we got to get pictures. And Jack is like, you want to buy my beer? <laughs> <laughs> I just Which, remember him throwing the cam- throwing that dude's camera out there. And he's like, oh no, my camera. And then he didn't get eaten. That yeah. was upsetting. And my son, when I was watching this he last was close. time, it's wanted close. him to die. That was a character you should have killed off on screen. Fucking they really a. missed it because he was so fucking annoying. He had no purpose in the movie. Like he leaves right after it. If you would have killed him off, it would have been fine. PG. That's why they didn't kill him. So oh, that's PG right. Rating. Probably budgets too at that point. <laughs> but the, this is the one where Bert gets eaten. Uh, and yes. That's a fun scene. Yes, because uh, that's one of my favorite scenes. That's why I wanted to hurry up and be in part two. It wasn't. So and, and uh, the one this. Bert getting eaten also leads to the end of the only minority that survived the first one. Oh, uh, fuck, man. Because what happens is Bert gets eaten by one of the graboids. Uh, magically, 
survives because they, they it runs. So Bert's got this like fortress essentially. When the Graboid eats him, it takes off towards his fortress and just runs into a fucking wall, fucking dies. They dig it up. They cut him open with a chainsaw. With a chainsaw. <laughs> hey, I which love chainsaw. Which is a great scene for a PG movie, by the way. Bert comes out and he's just. Fine. He's just fucking fine because you'll learn that in this franchise that this dude cannot fucking die. Oh, he's bulletproof. And or then, uh, proof. This is when we get introduced to ass blasters. Ass blasters. Ass blasters which they, I love, and I can't believe they get away with that. Yeah, That's because right. they, they, they literally shoot yeah. fire out of their ass and take off. Yeah. And their first thing is they kill Miguel. So yeah. our one of our only survivors from the first one, dead, gone. Uh, and this when we learn about the evolution of these. So now just to catch everyone up for these later movies, especially the evolution of grab is they start off as the giant dick, warm, high C McDonald's filled things. <laughs> then once they fully grow, this is a fantastic fucking description. They turn into shriekers, these screaming bitches that can see you if you're hot, stay cold. Then <laughs> put icing on you. After that, they become ass blasters. Which is like just birds that ate Taco Bell, essentially. Like they just fucking, <laughs> they fart and fire comes out and then they fly. Glide. They glide. They glide. They, glide. they, they clarify that. I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Glide. yeah. They glide. And then ass blasters become, what the fuck do ass blasters they, become? They lay eggs. They, okay. Then they ass, lay yeah, eggs. Then right. ass blasters lay eggs and then you start the cycle all over again. And uh, Q Elton John. And just going back to that, the Graboids, uh, when they're first born, they're like these little bitty fucking dudes, but they grow really fast, which we don't establish that till later. Right now, we're just on ass blasters. So just remember that because I don't want to explain the evolution. Please remember that part. Again. And it's the, uh, the ass blasters is probably the worst visual effects in the entire series. It gets it better. So it, bad. it, it gets does better. get better. But yeah, this I know, but this is the worst. Yeah. Holy fuck. Uh, this is, all the all the all the animatronic monsters and all of them are fantastic, but every time they try to do a village, visual effects up to this point, it's really bad. And you're right. After this, yeah. it, start, it gets better, and they start putting money. It's like they finally got um, like confidence in the yeah. series again. And they got to where I think after this, uh, they were kind of like, we don't have to keep evolving these things anymore. Because now, now at this point, this ends. It ends at Ass Blaster essentially. Pretty now much, you get yeah. you get tougher versions of these things that already exist. But they don't go, okay, by the way, now ass blasters become dick horns or right. whatever. That doesn't happen. It's also the introduction to uh, El Blanco. Yeah, El Blanco, which is very important guys, yeah. to the TV yeah. show. It is very good. Even ahead. though I haven't seen the TV show, I know that that leads damn. into it. I've looked into Fucking it. Fucking homework. I, I know. I know. I'm letting Derek just <laughs> go crazy over we're, here, but I'm actually did homework, but We're not to the TV like show yet. We've still got more to talk about. Well, the Trimmer television story. show, the thing about well, why this they did that is this. because the television show was actually supposed to come right after this, this movie. Which oh, yeah. It, it didn't, but. I don't know. Take it. The way we should talk about it, we should definitely go from this to the show, just based off of how it's laid That's out. That's fine, yeah. Before uh, we go into the show. Yeah, though, yeah, no. We're I not have, even done with the ass uh, blast. I know. We have to talk more about What the fuck, Dave? I don't know about you, but I've never done ass blasting. There's a specific scene. Taco Bell. <laughs> there's a specific scene in the movie where uh, Jurassic Park girl and uh, are you just gonna give her character and, a name? What the uh, fuck? Mindy, Mindy and uh, Jody, Jody Chang are in the are in the. No wait, it was Mindy and her mother. That's right. Yeah, they were in the uh, the convenience store, and an ass blaster comes through. And ass blasters also sense by heat. So this fucking creature's coming after him. Her big idea is she takes a fucking ham. And she throws it in the microwave <laughs> and yeah. then throws the ham at it. And the whole time I'm thinking, like, what was her mother thinking? <laughs> like, you know, her mother was just like, what the fuck? Like, you're just making a ham and this monster's trying to kill us. Didn't tell her, like, I've got a distraction. Right. She wouldn't have made a fucking ham sandwich. I'd be so fucking mad at mom right now. <laughs> like, really? Really? It was the weirdest part weird of this movie they, for me. They see heat. That's and the weirdest. Chucks it. That was the weirdest part. That's the weirdest part. I love that we just talked about a man getting cut out of a giant dick worm. But Jay's like, you know that ham shit? <laughs> That's the weirdest <laughs> ever. Weirdest shit. I don't know, man. If you're if your you're, level is different from mine. If you're getting if you're getting about to get murdered by a giant monster that shoots fire out of its ass, and your first thought was like, hey, to I'm heat gonna, up a fucking I'm ham, this ham. I don't know. Maybe maybe I just don't think on that level. How, I don't, I don't I'm already know. prepared, man. How high am I when this happens? Is I the don't real know. question. I just figured like you guys would chuck me the ham, I'd heat it up and be ready to go. We're all on the same level. But now I don't know. I guess yeah. we have to rely on just us. Sorry, Derek. Just so, us. L. 
<laughs> it's just us. It's just us. Dave was like, I don't know. Now this this movie, they're actually saved by El Blanco, right? That's how this ends, right? El Blanco eats these motherfuckers. Isn't that what happens? No, they get the, They make a potato. <laughs> Did they, you watch the movie? <laughs> they make a. They, <laughs> I love how might have been high. <laughs> how, how did this movie end? <laughs> they make a potato gun, and oh, what's surprising shit. about I it? I love the whole thing. Potato yeah, gun. Bert, oh, oh yeah. Bert didn't even gun. know what a potato gun and was. Then, well, he didn't have to, motherfucker. He explained. He, he had real guns. Yeah, I remember that. But now. it's still weird. I, he changed his BB gun into a fucking full AR. <laughs> oh, that's whatever another, age he was. That's a good scene in the movie, by the way, which I, I fucking forgot because I'm bad at these things. You're, just, you're rolling right now. You're fine. So Bert's fortress. I'm going to right when he was like cut outside that dick worm. Uh, they go into his fortress where it's just full of just guns and these secret tunnels. Well, they're getting attacked by just a lot of ass blasters, and you don't want to get attacked by a lot of ass blasters. Obviously, <laughs> I've blasters. seen that movie. Yeah, I've seen that movie too. <laughs> we talked about the Spice Channel being scrambled a few weeks oh, ago. Oh, scrambled but movies, scrambled ass blasters. <laughs> So they avoid them. They go into like this uh, shelter, you know, it's like safety, like a uh, fucking Armageddon fucking place. Bomb shelter. Fallout fall shelter. shelter. Yeah, fallout shelter. <laughs> and it's just <laughs> Armageddon it's, place. And, I'm just going to sit over here and just laugh all night. They, go ahead. <laughs> I know the way I don't know words for anything. It's just saying, you know, that fucking thing. Uh, they go in there and they're like, how long can we survive in here? And Bert's like, well, if we preserve the food properly, about seven or eight years. Well, the ass blasters get in because they tear the fucking door down. How do and Bert's they do like, it? Remember how they did by pipe blasting their ass. That's right. Oh, well, they, fuck yeah. yeah. What well, on? You, you use what you have, Dave. When you blast your ass, that's all you gotta do. Well, they get out of there. <laughs> Damn it. It's how I make money. Bird takes the fuck off, and when they get out, he's like, "I'm gonna bomb the whole place." So this beautiful, like, huge, like, bomb shelter he's built. He's also got like dynamite and shit, like, strapped to it to where it just fucking ignites. Yeah. So they go through this tunnel. He blows it the fuck up, and then he gets a call right after that. Saying, like, if they eat, they die, which is the opposite of the Shriekers. So he blew all his shit up, and the monster killed itself already by eating all the food. Yeah. So it's like the irony of the thing. It, 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 like, Bert's reaction to it's great. I look, I sound like I'm just blowing this dude because I love this character, which I shouldn't love him as much, but his, his like, facial expression when just like, son of a bitch. Uh, but that's what's great about Michael Gross's character as an actor is, like, Thank God, because he's in every single one of these. And yeah. if he sucked, then all these would be awful. No, he he really like buys in. You would go back to Rob Zombie Land, and you know it'd be like you're Sherry Moon all of a sudden. Oh, God, and you don't want that. He can never be. Sh- God, give me five Grady's before you give me one <laughs> fucking. Sherry you listen to our Rob Zombie episode. You know what we're talking about. Yeah, I can. I can. Derek loves. Give me fucking moon. Malibu Jack or whatever the fuck his name is before you give me Sherry like, Moon. Fucking Hal Dundee or something. <laughs> give me fucking anybody. But yeah, so, so that was a fun scene. And that's when we learned that, you know, like the ass blasters as opposed to the shriekers. Shriekers, you don't want them to eat because they multiply. Ass blasters, if they eat, they get full and they just fucking die. So they're like humans. But it's just like. <laughs> they're just fucking dead. They're just dude. They're just like 70 year old diabetics, essentially. So but, at the end, it, well, we can go back to yeah. sort of the end. They use the potato guns. They kill, they kill the ass blasters, yeah. but they don't kill El Blanco. And why do they not kill a Blanco? Because there's a series. Because there's a series. But <laughs> it was it's to thwart Melvin because yeah. Melvin can't build his homes. Oh, yeah. As long as they're as as long it's as like the whole subplot, board. guys. Yep. It's the, the whole subplot. And that sort of ends the movie. Yeah, and it's really weird because Melvin's on screen for how long? <laughs> Fuck that no, guy. Not barely. Maybe two minutes, though. He shows up, does his scene. There's a billboard. And he comes back at the end. And Bert's like, ha ha, fuck you, El Blanco. And I kept thinking he was going to die. And then it ends with Melvin being stuck I think there. we were all hoping he was going to die. But we didn't know there was a show coming up. Well, and then what the, the sh- fuck is the name of that character's act? Uh, the, the, no. the actor. Oh, in uh, real life? Robert Jane. Yeah, God, yeah. if you know who we're talking about, he is so fucking annoying in almost and, everything he plays. I think it's his voice. It's everything. And he's not, a, he's not in a lot, thankfully. So, But mainly just Tremors. Actually, Tremors 1. Night of the Demons. Yeah, no, you, you'd see him. Yeah. yeah, I've seen him. It's just, you know, in Tremors, he he's got this voice like this, yeah. man. In the show, <laughs> now, when we, once we get to this show here, which it only lasted, most of you probably don't even remember the Tremor show. Yeah, and the it's show right. originally was going to be made in 93, and it was going to be the Val and Earl Monster Hunter show. That would have been cool. Yeah, the pilot. Yeah. All, I mean, they, they, they had a whole idea, and it just didn't happen. Instead, we get 13 episodes in the town of perfection. Yeah. And we get a lot of, like, zany, kind of weird characters in this one. You get all uh, kinds of awesome fucking guest actors Reoccurring characters. Well, Vivica A. Fox is yeah. in it. Well, you got Michael Rooker. Yeah, Michael Rooker has a great little yeah. spot. Christopher Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and Breaking Bad Guy. The um, Brian Cranston. 
No, no, the Breaking the, the Brother. Oh, Dean Norris. Yeah. Yeah. So he plays actually, Dean Norris is actually in like, I guess almost every episode. So he's not even just a guest. No, he he, plays like yeah, that, he's recurring. Like definitely. the annoying, uh, like. Branson cop. Richardson, uh, Rich, Rich, Rich and, yeah. uh, he's in a lot of fucking things. Uh, but you would always, he was always, he always plays the uh, Native American guy or whatever. He's like in Kentucky Fried Movie. Yeah. Isn't he like he's in, in Renegade or one of those? Yeah, he is. Renegade. Okay, yeah, I yeah, remember Iron watching Eagle it. 3, which I know you love. Louis Gossie Jr., Firewalker. motherfucker. Yeah, exactly. That dude, like, I know him from Renegade. Okay? I used to watch that shit so much. And I remember seeing him, I was like, he looks just like he did in Renegade. And then you look at, you know, he the time fucking ages. But that show, uh, so it's a lot different than the actual movies because uh, it, it does focus on like all these different monsters. El Blanco, the the graboid we mentioned from the first one, is pretty much a good guy. Yeah, it's kind of like Godzilla. He's kind of like their hero, the town hero. And all these stories usually revolve around like, there's an episode about ghosts. There's an episode about like some kind of sea monster. It's all these random creatures. They're but you watched actual, all 13 episodes. I watched, I watched about 13. seven. And I'll tell you the main plot. Dave watched none. No, yeah. You're fired. No, it's over. Totally the, fired, Dave. The main thing's, can, there's like this criminal group uh, ran by Michael Rooker, but Rooker's only in like two episodes. But there's this He's group. He's such a dick, though. With Vivica A. Fox and two other guys. Uh, they come into the town. I don't know what they're up to. I can't remember what they're up to. But they have like this like key to something on their neck, and the one gets swallowed by a graboid. So the key's gone because a graboid ate it. And that's when you find out that graboids don't poop that often. <laughs> it's not like a dog. You can a, kill it later. It doesn't work that way. There's a two episode like story about waiting for a graboid to take a shit so they can get this key. And of course it leads to them snapping and trying to hold up the whole town. Now you do get all the characters that survive one and three. They're back. So Melvin's back and he's still a dick. Uh, he's just like, God. I'm going to buy this property still. Like there's so much shit you could do, Melvin. He's like, well, no, I hate this town so much. I want to destroy it. I don't want anyone to live the life that I did. I'm like, dude, okay. I can hear his fucking voice. I know. God damn it. Like if your dad was a fucking idiot, hey, man. It, like if your dad didn't lay on the fucking tire, we wouldn't have to go through this, but your dad's a fucking idiot, Melvin. We're sorry. He's dead. Shut the fuck kid up. that kid in the fucking maximum overdrive, I think? God, God, fuck. I hope so. And a fucking truck would hit him. <laughs> <laughs> Just make a montage of this kid fucking dying. He's awful, man. And he doesn't have like... He never has like a lot of lines. He just shows up and he's a dick and he's a bad actor. He's kind of like the villain. And then he goes. Yeah. And th- let me see. Like I a reoccurring villain that's still is trying to take over the town. I didn't make a ton of notes on the series because honestly, the series would be very hard to keep up with. Uh, one of the my favorite two episode story arcs on it was with Christopher Lloyd, though. Oh, it's great. Yeah. Uh, Which I don't, is weird because if you actually watched it originally, um, they were all out of order. Oh, so they yeah. Had, yeah. They had there was actually they had to film refilm something to make it explain why his character knew what was going on when they first introduced him, because the he was supposed to like be introduced in the second episode, I think. Yeah. And they moved that fucking episode almost to the end. I hate when they do that. In yeah. He shows. comes in. Uh, his two episodes are like five and six on the right. series. And he, he comes in as a so there's this creature named 412 or I can't remember. It's some three digits. And it's like another version of the Graboid or Shrieker, I should say. It's like a Shrieker, but with a giant horn on it. So it's terrorizing and killing all the cattle and people as they do. Uh, Christopher Lloyd randomly shows up at this time. They find him just, (laughs) they just find him fucking dead in the desert. And it turns out his story arc is that he's, he knows about everybody because he claims he's always just lived about a mile up the road Yeah, and he spies on them with his binoculars. But Bert would never have found him somehow. Right? Yeah, fucking exactly. No way. Backwoods militia so, fucking no. And we, we find out why, you know. So so his whole story is, because, you know, the one lady has a garden. He's like, oh, your garden's always so beautiful. She's like, how the fuck do you know that? Hello, creep. Yeah. He's talking to Bert, like, I've always admired you, Bert, all this shit. We find out later that uh, this guy is part of, like, a government program for these, like, monsters that they're creating, which created this monster which I'm going to keep calling 412 or 421. I don't know. It's that's the name of the episode, too. I can't remember yeah. what it is called. Yeah. But that's the name of the monster. So the whole time they're actually hunting this creature. And Christopher Lloyd's I kind wish of it was 420. because Please it's like 420, Dave. I know Dave's looking it up. We find out that this monster was essentially his best friend because this government project got shut down. Christopher Lloyd was essentially left for dead in this desert. And him and this weird, horny I mean, horny as he has a horn, not, not that he's not God that he's, part, not, that he's nipples. not that he's part two Earl in his trailer with that 74 playgirl. <laughs> but, oh, butthole. But he, uh, yeah. So, so it's a good story though. Cause it's this weird, Christopher Lloyd's a great actor. So he plays this weird fucking kind of brainwashed character. That's also got his like weird secrets. Like, oh yeah. It's really creepy. Project 412. Project okay. 412. There you go. And he's, he knows this monster has to be killed cause it's, trying to murder people and it's killing all the cattle and all this shit but he's still sad about it so there's, it's a real depressing kind of weird story it's the best story arc that they have on this 
Because they arrest this, like, Michael Rooker with his criminal gang. And there's all these weird, like, there's a sea creature episode and all this yeah. weird shit. But it's mostly Bert and El Blanco for well, 13 episodes. And I think they were trying to come up with different stories so they could, because mm. if the show is going to continue, I mean, what are you going to do? Just they'll tell this same fucking story about yeah. El Blanco every fucking episode that yeah. you can't kill this guy or you can't kill this trimmer? Yeah, you can't Graboid. kill this trimmer. Yeah. And also, I, I get it. And you can't find this shit. Uh, we were talked about it before the show. You can't find any of the streaming, the trimmer stuff besides part six. But if you want to watch the series, uh, they, the official, like whoever the fuck made trimmers posted all 13 episodes on YouTube. Yeah. That's it's not where, just yeah. like, it's not just a bootleg. You can watch all 13 episodes. Um, they're entertaining enough. They're 40 minutes long. I think they're great. I don't know how you do two seasons with it. Like when I watched it, I was like, you know what? I don't think you can just keep creating like other monsters for Earl the hunt or for, sorry, Bert. Nah, yeah. you'd be surprised, man. And what's really fucking cool is I actually wrote it down is that uh, it was the highest ranked reviewed show for Sci Fi uh, Channel when it first came on. I guess it got bad ratings then, right? Because they canceled it after one season. Yeah, I don't understand why that. I can't remember why that is. Dave, if you want to look it up on the internet. Oh, God. Well, <laughs> I don't want to look this up. They made poor decisions. My thing is, what kind of ratings is any sci fi show pulling? I don't know. Yeah, they've made like they- five Sharknado movies. They, they, have, no, they have no taste. They have yeah. no. They, well, yeah, and at that were, time it was just mostly like Incredible Hulk reruns. Yeah, so having a, a, a show premiere was probably a, a big fucking deal. Like that and movie. Remember the uh, the show Taken that Spielberg did? Like that, they had like these big yeah. you know ten pole things. Like, this was apparently bigger than that. Maybe the budget was high for the show. Weird. I By, know. You know, I wouldn't. By sci fi standards, yeah, maybe. Okay, the effects are still fantastic, actually. Yeah, no, um, I thought the effects were great on that. I thought they were fine. And I want to actually talk about that real quick. Uh, Shane, what are you doing over He's there? He's got a Sharknado oh off screen. Oh, my God. He's got a bring Sharknado that in. hat. Uh, don't, if you're on YouTube, don't. I'm not going to put it on your head, Dave. I forgot I had this. It's yeah. a Sharknado 3 Hell No fucking spongy I can't hat. wait till we do our Sharknado episode. What the f- oh, Are we going to do one? Yeah, we're I totally going to do it. I fucking hate everything now. Why? <laughs> we have to do it. <laughs> okay. Oh, the shit. internet's going to make us. It's a fucking evolution of things. We're talking about trimmers. Well, let's take a break for a second and talk about the uh, uh, Algamated Dynamics, who actually did the effects for, I think, all of the trimmers thing. They did all the uh, the mechanical <laughs> effects, and they started out with, it's Alec Gillis and uh, I think Tom Woodruff Jr. You can, Dave, if you can look it up if you want to this is like my childhood memory shit Bro, you go right ahead sir. those fucking guys they started with both with like stan winston and they worked on aliens together and then they created their own uh, uh company together uh which is now it's called uh, uh amalgamated dynamics they, they worked on point break day uh, there you go Derek. <laughs> alien three uh um I mean, uh, Death Becomes Her, Demolition Man, Wolf, all, a lot of fucking movies like Jumanji, a lot Mars Attacks, Starship Troopers, X Files, but like you should know who they are when if you know anything about aliens because they worked on that and helped Stan Winston a fucking great deal and took all their knowledge and put it into these movies. And a lot of people we haven't even talked about it. The very first film is uh, actually produced by Gail Ann Hurd, who actually produced Aliens. That's a connection. That's all I got. <laughs> uh, I was just looking at uh, looking up amalgamated sure, dynamics. I mean, just looking at some of the stuff they did. Oh my god, so just some much! Of, and just some of the stuff that's coming out. I mean, like the new Godzilla movie. They're they're, yeah, they're they working on, on that. that. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I actually met uh, Tom Woodruff Jr. and he's a fucking gem. He he is so down to earth. He's so nice. He doesn't drink, which is kind of weird, but especially when I met him because I was fucked up. Fucking hammered. <laughs> you got so did they do all the movies? I think they did all the mechanical effects for all the sh- uh, movies and the show. Yeah, because we're going right into the... None of the visual effects. That's why they suck. Okay, that's what I was going to say. We're starting to get into with the series and a little bit in Back to Perfection. We're starting to get into the CGI yeah. era. And they even this. worked on the one that didn't have a fucking budget. They just were like, okay, we'll do it for almost nothing because they just loved the idea. They love making monsters. And Bert looks... The same age in these, by the way. <laughs> like they put prosthetic on his face he, to make him look the same a little fucking bit. age. He, he aged I a little bit by five. I think I got this figured out now. <laughs> After you tell me how good this special effects team is, I think I understand Bert I mean, a little yeah, more. I, they worked on Wild Hogs, man. What's, what's Wild Hogs? Oh, my God. It's the old guy, the old geezer bike. Biker gang movie? Okay, forget it. John Travolta and Tim Allen, biker gang. Is this a pedophile movie? Well, here, okay. <laughs> Another thing is that I really liked about them is they, they you know, the, the movie uh, Harbinger Down. Remember that? It's like uh, the thing on ice with Lance Henriksen. It's fucking great. It's all pr- practical effects. These God, cats, I would pay so much money to go see the thing on ice. <laughs> <laughs> Not like ice skates, by the way. It's great. They're on a boat. It, it doesn't matter. But they, these cats, they got together, and when Kickstarter was still a thing, like becoming a thing, uh, especially for films, they were one of the first ones that actually did a Kickstarter just to make their own movie. Holy shit. No, I didn't know that. And man. it's rad. And if you go see that movie, it's all practical effects, and it's literally like these huge monsters. Yeah. 
I always appreciate your special effects knowledge because I would have never even looked up who did the special effects on Tremors. As cool as it all is, now if you go on YouTube and search Tremors, though, yeah, I had to because their fucking of, monsters are so yeah, beautiful. There's a ton of like 30, 40 minute documentaries on Grab Boys and how they make them and shit like that. I didn't get around to that because doing all this in a week was enough. Yeah, I know. When we decided to do this last week. I was like, holy shit. Because I wanted to conquer the series and. Fuck. I only, I'm glad you did because we didn't watch enough of it. Apparently, yeah. I mean, but well, I not, saw some. I saw some of it when it came out, but I don't remember all of it. So I had to go back, and I got to like like seven episodes, like it, I said. It's live action Scooby Doo with Graboids, which is I am all it, about yeah. that shit. Yeah, no, it, it's fun. <laughs> uh, the Graboids aren't the main focus, you know, at all. You know, besides El Blanco, the rest is just like kind of random monsters, which is fun, and it's still set in a town of perfection. You get tons of Burt Ward, so if you're a fan of that character. He kills it as usual. You get a lot of the characters from the first one coming back, and they're more fleshed out in this, of course. You get more lines. Uh, you have... It's not Suzanne Chang, but it's somebody who looks exactly like Suzanne Chang taking her place. I probably, I thought Dave was going to look that up, because I feel like she definitely was in Back to Perfection, and then it's the same character in yeah. the series. It's a different woman, and it kind of blew my mind. They must have found somebody who's yeah. perfect, and it's not like the whole, oh, yeah. Asians look alike. I mean, she yeah. looks fucking perfect. Yeah. And then they bring in another annoying sidekick from well, 13 episodes, <laughs> and he is just Jack Part 2. He actually is there because Jack sold him his sideshow business. So that's the whole thing. When he shows up, he's like, Jack sold me this. Oh, and, shit. Okay. And she's so like, that asshole? Because it turns out Jack got laid and he had to leave. <laughs> can't she be around did. anymore. You, you got fucked. But he didn't take Suzanne Chang with him or Suzanne Chang's lookalike. Did you look that up to see who who plays oh, her in the uh, in the TV in a series? Show, it's not Jody Suzanne. Chang is L- Leela Lee. Leela Lee. Yeah. But it's a different one. In the oh, movie. you're right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. shit. So it's a different person. Yeah, they switch them out. Wait, no, 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 no. That's the name of the character. What's the name no. of the woman's that, name is Susan Chang. No, uh, the 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 actor is Lila Lee. Lila Lee. In, oh, but in the, the character's series. name is Jody Chang. And in the movie, that's it's Suzanne Chang. Up. They switch her out. That's so be- it, That's perfect how they did that. But it's though. hard to tell. And it's like, it's weird. It's like they, they look for a girl that looked just like her. They really did. Oh, yeah. And I don't even, even mean that in a like fucking her. hillbilly, like, ho, ho, Asians. They really did find someone that fucking looked just it like her. It fooled me, baby. Yeah. And, and, you and could, I'm really good with, like, movie You can tell she's younger. Yeah. But other than that, I mean, I remember, like, it came on. I was like, fuck, they found, like, they got all of them back. And I'm, I look, I was on the IMDb, and I'm like, you fucking got me. You, <laughs> you got me, you sons of bitches. And then, yeah, they have Jack's replacement. I can't remember the dude's name, even though I watched like all the episodes. He just wasn't that memorable. And most of these characters aren't really. I and mean, most of these characters no, are. It's just all about Bert. You're in Bert's world, the side characters. But they are oddly like likable. Like, none of them, they're all just small town people. None of them were like come off as like douchebags or assholes. Like every horror movie loves to do like, <sighs> yeah, no. every character's a piece of shit in a horror movie. You know, we've already went over that asshole. Like, yeah, a couple yeah. episodes and, ago. Oh, still, <laughs> oh Trim- yeah, yeah. Tremors is good about just like they give you like these characters that don't have a lot of lines, but they act normal at least. Not everybody's there for comedic value. Not everybody's there trying to act like a badass or a complete like fucking asshole. Right, which is good because. In horror movies, you always just have, like, the guy that's there to have sex, the guy that's there to get high, and the girls that are there to show their tits. You don't really have any of that in Tremors. Well, if you Besides girl, people having sex and never coming if back. You, if you, as you were going to say, if you had a girl showing her tits and a guy want to have sex, yeah. that's, that's, your, that's your ticket off Tremors. That's your ticket off Tremors. Or Earl jerking off in his fucking trailer. Yeah, that's how it becomes uh, R-rated movie, guys. Okay, yeah. we can't do that. Now, off camera. We can bounce out of the series, which, once again, you it's on YouTube for free. So if you haven't watched it and you're like, what the fuck? There's a series? It's there. It's not the new one. We'll talk it's, about the yeah. trailer that came out for the new one in say, a little yeah. bit. But the actual series that came out, what, what, 2000, what? When was that? Or maybe 90s. When was that series? Oh, for the show? Yeah. The original was supposed to be 93, but the show didn't come out until like 2003. Fucking, 2003. Yeah. So, okay, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's 17 fucking years ago, but it holds up for the most part, especially for a sci fi TV show. If you know what you're getting into, you'll enjoy it. Uh, before that, though, right? We had the prequel. Legend uh, yeah. begins. The legend begins. The legend <laughs> begins. So, what were your In feelings on this? Which was directed by the uh, original writer of the first film. My feelings were it was like I was watching a really long episode of Briscoe, Briscoe County, County Jr. Jr. I knew exactly, you were going to say that. That's exactly what it felt like. Which was fucking great, by the way. And Billy Drago was in it. So. Billy Drago. That's what that, you, uh, we could discuss this, didn't we? Okay, yeah. Because that's the thing is Billy Drago is he just brings back that flavor. He's so fact. He, he's a great actor. If you know who we're talking about, he's in Vamp. He's in. Uh, I mean, Jesus Christ, he's a. Fucking in the Untouchables, uh, he, he usually plays a villain, but he's just so swarthy. It's, I don't is know what he it kind is. of a villain in this. 
Yeah, uh, he's a gun for hire. He's he's annoying, but he just I mean, he's kind he, of a dick. He he, he he it makes sense. Cowboy he's not, yeah, he's not a him villain, with a cowboy hat and a pistol just it yeah. just makes sense. And he's in Briscoe County, <laughs> Briscoe County Junior. He's in Cyborg too. He does a lot of sequel movies. And his introduction in this movie is great. So just to kind of talk about what this actually is, because if you haven't seen it, you might be lost when we're talking about like cowboys. This is a prequel. It's set. Sometime after the Alamo, I know that. Yeah. They don't say the exact year, but there's an Alamo joke in it. The so town's name that. is different, too. The town's name is Rejection. The town's name, yes. That's so, where I would be fucking living right so now. So before its perfection, it was actually called Rejection, which is like a running joke in it. So they had this water tower of Rejection. Uh, Chains is still open. It's the same store. Uh, owned by, I guess, his family just ran this store for hundreds of fucking years, which is crazy. Yeah. We have Graboids here, even though in 1990, we're acting like we've never heard of Graboids before. Surely this would have been a story that people yeah. would tell in a town of 12 people for centuries and centuries. So they, be a they, they cover, they cover that, though. Do they? Do they? they cover that. Oh, please, that? educate us. They cover us. that, in, in, that. In, in the movie. Well, at, yeah. at the end of the movie, they decide... I know we're skipping over the whole movie, well, but, you, okay. but uh, uh, go Michael, it, Michael, Michael Gross's character in this is uh, Hiram Gummer, which is Bert's great, great grandfather. Well dressed. And, and since and broke. since his whole interest in this town is the silver mine that he owns, yeah. he makes a pact with everybody. We can never tell anybody about this. How the fuck nobody, did I miss nobody that? Nobody will settle here if they know about okay. the giant oh, market. Please roast the shit out of us on YouTube with that comment. Because I'm like, you motherfucking don't I wouldn't remember, remember it that. either if I didn't just watch it the other night. So. Oh, yeah. maybe that's what it is. I just, I totally I saw that I just forgot about it. That. And I remember that being a whole thing. And we can actually get to that. Well, let's Tarantino it and we'll go backwards here. Uh, <laughs> so Michael Gross's character in this one when I was getting into this prequel, I was like, oh, man, this is going to be some Old West, like, gun-carrying bad motherfucker is going to be his ancestor. It, it turns out he's this, like, mine owner who's kind of a piece of shit. Yeah, he, oh, God, he is. Who shows up in, like, this this horse-drawn town riding a bicycle. He's a complete pussy, In too. the dorkiest never, way. Never yeah. uses a gun. And I'm, one of my notes is lack of Falcon's hat. <laughs> there is, <laughs> well, I mean, what are they going to do? There is no Falcon's hat. And guns. He doesn't, he doesn't oh, own guns. He doesn't own any guns. Uh, he's kind of like a pompous ass and he's, he's there because the reason why he shows up to the town of rejection is because he owns the mine that people were digging in for silver for him and they all died and he's wondering why work wasn't getting done. Yeah. That's, so he, that's a good boss. So he shows up and he what the fuck is wrong with you all. We're dead. Oh, everyone's just like, um, everyone's dead. We lost, I think it's like eight miners. I have like 12 miners are dead. Yeah. So the rest, he's like, no, we must go back. So he makes them all go back to show them like what's going on. And of course, the graboids come out. This is when we learn. And this has a, this is kind of the evolution I was talking about earlier that they're babies at first, that they're small. So in this one, they start off very small and kind of jumping at people. Yeah, they're really fast too. Which is a good twist on it, really, especially in the old west when everybody's carrying like handguns and like rifles and shit like that. So that brings in our gun for hire. Uh, Michael Gross can't do shit. He's He's a wimp. He can't do anything. So he's not the Bert that we know. He's yeah. his ancestor. So they bring in the gun for hire who comes in and it's like nice black jacket, black hat, like typical old West looking villain type of guy. Kind of like straight out of Westworld, Ed Harris, really. Oh yeah. Ed Harris uh, or like fucking uh, Johnny yeah. from uh, Tombstone. But his, his scene when he shows up as the gun for hire is pretty good. Cause they're like, how, how do we know you can shoot? And he goes, toss me that apple. And I love that because everybody's like <laughs> tense and waiting for him to shoot this apple. So this kid throws it to him and he just catches it and starts eating it. <laughs> it's just that moment's great because they're just like, uh, what are you doing? He's like, I'm fucking eating apple. I mean, yeah, apple. <laughs> eating an apple. I you were going to shoot something. Nope. Shoot some- yeah. And then he shoots like this rope or some shit and does like, proves that he's a badass. But he's also kind of a pompous, unlikable asshole the whole time he actually out assholes Burt Ward's yeah. character I think it's a Billy Drago Ward. thing like, like I think what's being his contract he's like what, what's, the, what's the character I'm gonna play but, but am I a dick okay cool I'll be I'll do it yeah am I a dick I'll then I'm gonna do it yeah uh, I thought it was a good prequel I mean it, it pretty much kind of like what I talked about earlier though I like western horror films yeah. it's like, I don't know that's a weird yeah. thing that I, I, I'm really into and uh, yeah I totally was into this movie it was fun It was, the, the, this, this, that's this, the thing about all these movies was, they're all fun they're yeah fun. this one was fun it wasn't a rehash they're not annoying, though. It was, they're not annoying it was, it was different it was another way to tell the story of the Graboids and it was a cool little backstory for the town, and there's also um, I know, just noticed on IMDb there was somebody in that that movie called Old Fred as well. I'm, sorry, I'm assuming he died. <laughs> old Fred. Yeah, old there Fred. was another Old Fred. That's just, that's the first death in the movie series. 
So what I'm wondering, so there's this town, there's 12 people Nice little again, touch. And we talked about it earlier. Who's fucking who to have these kids to where there's ancestors? Yeah. Because it's like literally the same demographics over and over and over. Well, like the Graboids have, uh, have babies asexual, right? So yeah. you go. Maybe so you're suggesting that you everybody there's like, asexual. That's why it becomes perfection. But like, who is the ancestor of the guy that died on like the tower in the first one? <laughs> old Fred. Oh, God. Old Fred. Yeah, there old you go. Fucking it all Fred. makes sense. He's his great, great grandfather, old, old Fred. I mean, I guess there can be off screen characters. I would really need to go back to that. I think it's. It might be back to perfection that shows the sign coming into the town that shows the population. One of these does it. It might be a more recent one, but I thought it was back to the perfection. But I did. I like the Old West style. I like how cheesy it was. I like that it didn't take itself too seriously. They knew what they were doing. Oh, God, They made yeah. Briscoe County Jr., like you were saying. Uh, watching Michael Gross's character, Bert, grow over this, like, you know, become kind of a, a gun obsessed maniac by the end of it. Oh, fuck yeah. Because the first guy, they all grab guns, by the way. So, so the guy, the gun dude, what the fuck's his name? Real life named actor. Billy Black, Drago. Black, yeah. Yeah, Billy Drago. Every, he gives everybody a gun. He gives Michael Gross, like, this tiny little fucking pistol. So they're all shooting at the grab board. It's like, boom, boom, boom. And Michael Gross goes, pew. <laughs> which is also one of my favorite fucking scenes in the movie because it's just such a different a different character from what I was expected given like the other couple of movies for him I thought he was going to be the badass he was going to be the hero oh absolutely and it turns out like he kind of ends up being the hero in his own little way but it's mainly because he actually got some morals by the end of the movie he grew as a character he actually helped the town that he didn't need to help yeah. or want to help at first. And that's the thing is that he, he shows up a pompous piece of shit, treats everyone like their yeah. lower lives. And he actually doesn't have a fucking dime to his name, if I remember correctly. Yep. Yeah. And he has to pawn. He, 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 he becomes a good guy and he like gives his, his watch to get the guns. And to everything. get the guns. And yeah. We I'm gotta trying talk, to remember because I actually have not seen this movie in a while. We got to talk about that giant. It was called a punt gun. I didn't know. That Please this, tell us. This uh, was a thing, but it's the giant shotgun that that he gets in the movie and this thing yeah is, okay that's the yeah, end, yeah this thing is like it's a know, fucking it's, it's cannon got, it's like 10 <laughs> feet long and full of shot yeah and full uh, of shot the dude. one loaded on the back of the trailer yeah 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 yeah. the one that he misses a, uh, a graboid from like five feet oh, away yeah. How do because, you know? he, because he doesn't know anything about guns um but in this movie you know uh, the suspense is there a little bit more because they all they all really suck. It's not just that they're stupid. They just they, they, just, they have no way to they have no way to defend themselves. They have old school old west weapons, and all they have really is uh, the hotel owner collected guns for some reason. So she's got all these kind of like yeah people's debts. She oh, took that's right, guns. that's right. She's a smart woman. So she's got that wall of guns. There is a fun joke in it though between uh, Bert, yeah, Bert and the uh, the Mexican character where they make a joke about the Alamo. And the, yo, the guy brings it up. He's like, it's going to be like the Alamo. And the guy, oh, God. And, and, Bert, and Bert goes, my people lost. And yeah. Basically, the guy's like, Shit. my people did. Yeah, my people did, <laughs> you was, dumb fucker. It was, it was just a good, like, he's because he says our people to the guy. And the guy's uh. like, oh, your people lost, not our people. <laughs> it's just a good, like, little scene, like the riff on. There's a lot of good, like, little one-liners in all these movies, actually. Like, they're not like and the dialogue, dialogue is actually pretty good. Yeah, they're not like Evil Dead levels of like Bruce Campbell one liners, but there's a lot of good like one liners. Oh, there's, slip in there there, there's a good part. one in the in the last one, but we'll talk about that one. Yeah. And it's right. funny you bring up Bruce Campbell because we haven't really described what the hell we keep going to. Briscoe County Jr. was a television show that was a Western sci fi weird kind of fucking way ahead of its time television show with Bruce Campbell in it. We have any, we, we keep saying that should have waited way longer than it did. Oh, oh it, man, it was brilliant. But we, we kind of keep bringing that up because this is all kind of connected. And especially this episode or this, this one, this movie of the series is very Briscoe County Jr. Like it's probably, I mean, but I just wanted to clarify that because people are like, what the fuck are they talking about? Yeah. Like, Briscoe County Jr., Bruce Campbell's sci fi Western television show. Yeah. And this one, this one plays Billy out. Drago. All these movies have the same formula, which is we're introduced to a form of graboid. We don't know how to kill them. We figure out how to kill one of them. They evolve some way. We're fucked. We win. This is kind of how it works. And it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a winning formula for the most part. Uh, it's one of the few horror movies where almost no main characters ever die. It's very rare that yeah, they but you kill. don't really realize it. There, there's, not, there's not really that many Or they just disappear because they have sex. Yeah. yeah. You always kill off. Like, they kill off side characters that come on the screen. But it's fun, too, because, like, they, like I said, they do make the characters likable enough. Because right, there's the the guy with the hats in it, the, the Mexican guy that like couldn't afford the hat, who becomes like the main sidekick, the yes. only like non idiot sidekick in all these movies. Right, it's per uh, perfect. He becomes likable. You don't hate him. Feel for him. And I remember there's there's a scene where he's getting chased by a gravoid, and my son just goes, 
they better not kill him. I'm like, yes, that's fucking, that's what you should film when exactly. you watch these movies. And, that, and that's not, great for it. It's not dumbed down for children. It's not a children's yeah. level, you know, fucking television show. It's still adult. It, you know, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah, it's, it's fun. continuously fun. And this one, uh, what Dave was getting at, uh, what happens is Bert's character, I keep calling him fucking Bert, Michael Gross's character, the ancestor of Bert, leaves this town. You think he's just going to be a piece of shit and leaves. He ends up going to a gun store and buys a fuck ton of guns, including the shotgun that Dave mentioned earlier. He kills one and then the next one jumps up and eats it. And then they're like, they get smarter. And I'm like, yeah, if you yeah. guys would have watched the other fucking couple movies, but yeah, if you could go hundred years future, from now, you, know this. you would fucking know it. And then they, of course, they got to resort to what? What do they do in this one? Is it they, another uh, fucking potato gun? No, Is this potato no, gun no, too? They, it's potato they, gun they, too. <laughs> they ended up, they ended up like hooking it and uh, to their little like uh, tractor train little thing. That's what it was. And yeah. they drug it to it, and it just broke apart. Yeah, because their skin is made of icing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and there's one of my <laughs> paper. There's one of my favorite kills too with the saw. I forgot about that. Where he's chasing, so oh, he's, yeah. he's chasing the the guy, the sidekick. I told you guys that was pretty entertaining. There's an older man in the town who uh, he's trying to save him, so he starts making all this noise. He's like ah, screaming, and he takes this giant, <laughs> giant, <laughs> ah, <screaming>. giant, fucking, <laughs> <laughs> this giant ten foot saw, and somehow he has the strength to push it into the ground. I tried to dig a hole before. Maybe I'm just a bitch, but it takes me a long time. Oh my but god, it, it does. He, he puts a ten foot like fucking saw into the ground gets the grab boy to go towards it and the grab boy goes right into the saw and cuts itself in half which is one of the smarter Brilliant. kills in the whole movie yeah it's great yeah. and, then, and course, it can be extremely grody because it's all orange tang blood exactly and then uh, it ends with Bert's ancestor gets laid by the girl that looks like Reba in it and then we never see his ancestor again ever again until part one that's because it's like a hundred years later and also just to clarify I found never. the population of perfection what the this is, you've been doing this the whole fucking time haven't you 14 that's what it says. So what? really, so they are just fucking each other. <laughs> oh my over. god! This well, is, well, I guess all the this is like a Twilight Zone is, episode. Uh, it has to just be never stop. It, this is a Twilight Zone episode that never stops. Yeah, because if it's fourteen, and it is always, I think I almost had the numbers exactly right early on. It's like you got like eight white people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you do the math, it's yeah. like clues. It's like one plus one plus plus one. It's I really mean, they've only got fourteen <laughs> people, but it's pretty diverse. Fourteen. Yeah, it, it, because it's the same people. We discover that with you know, device, the, town, man. the town of rejection. Divisive. So now, But they turn it to perfection, and they must have misspelled yeah. purgatory because that's what it sounds no like. No shit, you were totally in purgatory for the rest of your life. And what's interesting <laughs> about this... Neither world. So the prequel, I guess, was their way of like... This was supposed to be the end of Tremors, I guess. Cause this I is think so. Didn't, yeah. And we don't get another one till 2005, right? If you're looking for my whiteboard, it's not even on there, man. I know. So we, yeah. So we don't get Jamie Kennedy Tremors. No, uh, that was 2015. Which was Tremors. I like that you're looking at the DVD. 2015. Tremors. Case. So Hellraiser 5 Bloodline. We're Tremors 5 Bloodline. Damn it. Blood, they couldn't use a different tagline than fucking Bloodlines. Come on, guys. I know. We, come on. Hellraiser already did that. Hellraiser's already got it. Come on, dude. Tremors in space. Uh, God, so, I hope it happens. Oh, yeah. Again, this one's a little bit different. Like, it starts. Um, it starts in Africa. I like your notes. Yes, I've got. I've got a little notes. It starts in Africa. You Dave have has a, notes. You have a recap with Bert, and uh, you know it establishes that the the graboids are just ancient. They've been around forever. There's paintings, cave paintings it start, on the walls. Uh, it starts with a man taking a shit, and he falls down a hole with the cave paintings. Yeah, I, I tried Perfect. to describe it a little bit more elegantly than that. It's but too yeah, late. He's taking a shit. You forget and, who you're uh, with. You're he with dies, us, man. We're gonna just shit he dies, the and then he then fucking go into Burt Gummer, who's doing like a Bear Grylls type survival show. Which is fantastic. It, by it the is way. fantastic. Yeah. Not only not only does he kill a snake and build a clay oven, he's also got, you know, spices that he sells. So he's selling his own spices. And then fucking here comes Jamie Kennedy. Fucking oh, Jamie Kennedy. I think I, think, I, think I forgot to mention like, what Derek had mentioned to me. What was it? The uh, he's riding the so motorcycle. He cuts. So first we got Bert, who tells me a rattlesnake tastes like chicken. What the fuck ever, Bert? Then we pan to Jamie Kennedy. Jamie Kennedy's just standing in a fucking desert. And he's like, time to put my helmet on. And Wait, this is also the introduction of the only character who finally actually annoys me in all these characters, and I want in to, all these movies. And let's keep in mind, this isn't, Fuck. This isn't 1996 Scream, Jamie Kennedy. This is 2015 Cocaine and Bloated, Jamie Jack Kennedy. Daniel's fucking drinking. This dude is made Get of... Get some, Jamie. This is, dude is made of Jack and Coke and Coke and Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> and his face, there's something happening there. I don't know what. And the hair... We'll talk about that later. He wears a helmet a lot, so that's good. 
But he gets on this dirt bike, and you, you're introduced to him. He's wearing this leather jacket, but you can look at him and go, well, that dude's not in the best shape. Then he hops on the dirt bike, and there's like two minutes of dirt bike riding. And it's the most built motherfucker you'll ever see <laughs> doing dirt bike And tricks. I wanted to think that they did that on purpose, but I don't think they and did. And I'm just like, and he's doing like, like these. stunt double from hell. And he's doing like the best tricks for like no reason. He's yeah. riding by himself and he's like, oh, going to stand on my handlebars and fucking flex. And right, he's let's like, get Kane Hodder for the yeah. stunt double for Jamie Kennedy. He's That's just, a good idea. He's just giving himself reach arounds midair and shit. I'm like, Jamie Kennedy can't get out of bed. This is, <laughs> this is fucking bullshit. Well, he did because he filmed this movie. Yeah, this is just like, dude. I would love. I want to go to the next horror convention, and I'm like, you're gonna. I, he's gonna. Fuck I'm like, note. I'm oh. like, I got a dirt bike outside. Start it. <laughs> start start it. the dirt bike. Just, just, just start the acting, bike. man. Just fucking start. Okay. It. Yeah, but that's some like. That was. It's such an unnecessary scene. I it don't really, get it either. And it's super '90s. It's super like the introduction. Like if I was watching like Hackers on bo- Biker Boys. If I was watching Biker Boys. I was gonna say Hackers on Bikes, but it's Biker Hackers Boys. <laughs> and, uh, Hackers on Bikes. So it's just not it's not a good opening, but I ended up liking this movie. Anyway, Jamie Kennedy's introduced. Uh, he just kind of pulls up the Burt, and the cameraman's like, "Whoop! I'm leaving. That's your new cameraman, because that's how Hollywood works, baby. That's business, show business, son." <laughs> Uh, Bert's like, who the fuck are you? And Jamie Kennedy's like, I know you. You've been in Florida before. And Bert's like, Florida? He's like, gun show, 1974. And I'm like, 1974 came up. That's what the calendar that Earl jerked off to. But yep. also, when fucker was in Florida at a Grateful Dead concert, which we established this instantly, and it'll come back later. Yeah. But it's like, I I go back and watch that, and I wonder, like, how do you not question this guy instantly going, like, why the fuck are you bringing up Florida right now? Oh, we'll, I'm we'll from talk about that later. Perfection, you motherfucker. But he's not questioning it. He says new, but he hates him at first. And then Jamie Kennedy's like, but oh, look, I got a gun. And then Bert's like, oh, I like guns. <laughs> I love your voices. The, tonight. Only, the only thing that would have been better is if you wore an Atlanta Hawks hat, especially the one from the first one that I lost. So, <laughs> but he's but he's back to but he's got his Atlanta Hawks hat back though. He's got uh, uh he's got a but he's it's got the, it's, ah. the, it's the third one that he's had. I know now. it's a different one again. Keep a track. A fourth one if you count the series. So then <laughs> mid conversation, uh, this, this guy that looks like a drug Lord shows up and he's like, Hey, we got graboid problems and Africa will pay you all this money. And then and he's with the African wildlife, African uh, wildlife uh, federation, federation. Probably, yeah. the, probably the shitty company that sued a WWF. And that's why we got WWE. So fuck them. Let them get eaten by graboids. Somebody's angry or whatever, but <laughs> <laughs> fucking selling wolf tickets. But anyway, they, <laughs> we don't need credentials. So just come on, you know, come come kill our graboids. Bird's instantly like, of course, hunting mode. He's like, yeah, fuck yeah, I'll go kill some graboids. And Jamie Kennedy's like, no, 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 let's hustle them. We can get more money out of this. But the hustle ends up being for like the finance, this TV show he just got hired for. Yeah. And he's like, that's all we needed. So oh, he, he was already doing it. Yeah. <laughs> he's yeah he just hustled the hustle. Yeah, he just hustled the hustle. And then two grown men wink at each other. And that's how this deal's made. So this movie started with Jamie Kennedy on the dirt bike and then Jamie Kennedy winking at another man. I'm like, fuck, I'm going to hate this. Then it just gets, it's all uphill though. It gets really good now. Yeah, it does. Uh, I'll let you, Dave, take it from here because you just watched it and you seen that you got a lot of notes on this. So I just want to follow up on your notes. I've got, I've got quite a few, but they, so, so they, they get to Africa and um, they go to the, they go to their little town and uh, what was it? Was I'm trying to think if I'm getting that one confused with the other one. Oh yeah. They, they, they don't give them guns. They don't give them the guns they that they wanted. They don't give them the guns that were promised. No, they don't give them the guns that are promised. So part one problem. Uh, Bert didn't have the intel that he needed, like he always does. Never gets enough intel. Um, but I like all this. <clears throat> oh, I mean, no, no. It's it's the, the, these are great plot points that's all Oh, no. No, I'm just saying. Every, it works in the every, movie. Every, every, every no, one I mean, of I movies, he never gets the intel. He, yeah. always, he always says, this would have been helpful to know beforehand. But so they're they're greeted with uh, the the the, the douchebag, um, uh, the Mad Max looking fellow. Yeah, yeah, the dude with the fucking goggles. Who's yeah. this? He's like he's, he's not he's, Vernon Wells. Yeah, he's like, oh, I'm all fucking badass and all this. But you know, later on, a few few scenes later, he fucking shits himself. Like yeah, he's, a, <laughs> he's an ass blaster. But <laughs> I would uh, too. But uh, they they start out. There's there's this weird like sort of love story. Like Jamie Kennedy's trying to get out. Now, he's trying to get out of the franchise to to fuck the veterinarian. That's Valerie. Is that Valerie? Yes. No wait. Is no. It, which one's got Valerie? Valerie, Valerie is the sixth one. The sixth one? Okay, I yeah. skipped. Sorry. Okay, no. It's okay, we'll get there. <clears throat> no, and um, That's you know they're sweaty. there and they're they're gonna go out on these hunts and I don't even remember how it happened because my dog was barking at me. But eventually, an ass blaster shows up. Shit's so 
Yeah, so we show up. <laughs> Are you referring to when uh, the guy, the Mad Max looking guy, the dude that looks like he's standing around waiting to be in the Trent Reznor music video? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no. The, the guy, the guy, the guy that gets the guy that gets taken. So yeah. fucking ass blasters are in the uh, in the truck. They get in the truck. Okay, yeah, yeah. That, so yeah, the, at first the ass blasters get in the truck. So now we got to attack on the ass blasters. Uh, they don't involve in this one either. I don't believe. No. If I could, it's just ass blast city. <laughs> ass blast city. I don't want to go there. Uh, I'm not a fan. And now we're. I'm actually a fan. I just don't want to go there. Yeah. See, the scene I remember really, because I'm probably forgetting like the first fucking 35 minutes of this movie. The first thing I really remember is Bert goes out with uh, the the guys. It's the guy that looks like he's in the Trent Reznor video slash Mad Max, and then the guy that like hired him from the the World Wildlife Foundation. That's still WWF's name. And uh, so that they get out there, the ass blaster shows up. Bert catches it on fire. And when it's in the air, fucking shoots it, and it falls on this dude, this Mad Max looking fellow, and just fucking kills him. And of course, fucking WWF is like, not fucking mad. <laughs> yeah, no, you killed no, my friend. That was a little bit later, and we forgot to mention about the volatile stomach acids in the ass blasters that make oh, them. Oh yeah. That that they figure out if you mix them, they will explode. Yeah. So, but that was a little bit later. What the scene I was talking about was where the one guy that fights the ass blaster with the machete. And you think he wins and then gets taken away. And then Bert oh, okay. grabs, then oh, Bert yeah. grabs Mad Max, dude. And he's like, let's go get, let's go get our friend because he's laying in the middle of a, uh, of a, of a uh, bridge bleeding to death. So he puts on his, Bert's got, at this point, he's got the uh, special suit to hide his body heat because he's prepared uh, always. And um, he goes out there and then the ass blaster scoops up the guy and then goes toward the Mad Max guy who's crying like a little bitch the whole time at this point. He's just like, oh, yeah. I'm get out of here. So I remember that now because yeah. so initially, uh, actually, two fairly likable characters, and the guy with the machete, you, he seemed like definitely a character that would survive these movies with the way how Tremors has been set up. But he, he gets killed fairly <laughs> early on during a fight because he does like he hits him with a machete. And you're like, oh fuck yeah, like that's good because <laughs> you don't yeah. get a lot of that type of contact in Tremors movies. Like a straight like machete shot, it looks good. And then the mother like, nope, scooping you, bitch, and then <laughs> takes off flying with him. He's like, bye, motherfucker. Fucking tells from the dark side, bitch. And I, oh. So, so that happens, and but they get in the truck. The it's movie. Like, it's Bert and fucking uh, Trent Reznor guy, and the dude's like, "You're just like John Rambo, aren't you?" He's all like shooken up and shit. So that we finally established Bert is the true badass he is when he's called on screen John Rambo. Fuck yeah, it's about time. Dun dun. What a dun, from dun, here. Dun, dun. This movie. Well, Kind of becomes the Jamie Kennedy show. Yeah, and that's that. That's where it sort of falls down, goes downhill. Because but, to the people who made this movie, he probably be was kind of like the most yeah. relevant at the time. It's like, oh, we're gonna put Jamie Kennedy. In it. People yeah, will love that for sure. But I get that. It's so the, the movie progresses a little bit more, and they find out that big surprise, the guy that was from the World Wildlife thing is not actually with them at all. No. He's 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 he's, he's, a, he's a poacher. He's a poacher, and he wants to take the graboids because they eventually get an egg. They eventually get an egg, and there is they, they do turn into graboids. Yeah, there's just a big yeah. mama graboid. So they they eventually get an egg, and he traps Bert in a cage, and it is the weirdest fucking two minutes in the whole series. Just. Naked Bert. He's just naked. Naked. No, he's he's, he's wearing his boxers and his but, hat, right? But uh, yeah. yeah, and you see Michael Gross just just losing his shit, and then eventually a lion comes up and pisses on him. Oh, the piss in the yeah. mouth. Yeah, and, and then no reaction to it really. Like so, he gets like pissed on. And it goes like right in his mouth, but he really just kind of goes, mm, eh. like yeah. you know, like like a Limited, like man. a flat soda, like <laughs> a flat. I was gonna say lemonade, but okay. But like, dude, if you have a cat. We know what regular cat piss smells oh, like. Oh, I can't imagine. I can't imagine what a lion's piss of, smells like. Yeah. Like 100 degree, running all day, Ugh. drinking your own piss piss. Like, what can that? I can't even comment because I've never drank more. What can piss, reci but I'm just say recycled it's gross. lion piss is uh, what that is. And do you think lions only drink their own piss? I don't know what they do. I don't fucking watch Discovery Channel. This is just weird. I like. I don't know what comes out of our fire extinguisher. Why the fuck would I know about lions? <laughs> you <get> fucking icing. <laughs> Fair enough. Like icing. For all I know, they piss icing. <laughs> <laughs> so from here. They 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 move Anyways. on. They they move on. Jamie Kennedy shows up to save the day and simultaneously make the movie worse. Um, saves Bert. <laughs> I like how you're trying to hurry up because we Bert in the worst about. way. By the way, no 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 no. No, he say he saves Bert. How does he save way. him? He he hooks the cage to a truck, 
and they're being chased by a graboid, this giant graboid. And uh, he's it's just, not El Blanco. He's just, no, they're not. Though. Remember, it's a make believe when he's hallucinating it. Oh, that's right. That's right. He's not even. He's. It's not even there. He's just fucking pulling this yeah. cage with a chain, and then he runs runs it in straight into rocks. He's and going it flips over. What? He's going probably eighty. Yeah. With a man in a cage dragging him, <laughs> and Bert's like fucking fine after it. Yeah. Yeah, because he's fucking John Rambo. They've already established. You've established that. the yeah. Rambo connection. It's just good because they find him and he states, he goes, "You broke every bone in my body." And the next scene, he's just got like his guns. He's fucking yeah. Yeah, 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 he's, yeah. he's, he's, he's good to go. He's good to go. It's movie magic. So they it's go on. Magic. They go on. They they find the truck of the uh, of the uh, the poacher that stole the egg, and uh, yeah, they, they they I can't remember exactly where it goes from here. Yeah. Jesus, God. They, no, so they, how do you get they, to the end and not remember? No, so no, the, no, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to get so there the, in a careful way. So the poacher's got like he's got this egg in it, which is attracting the graboids. That's this poacher right. now they're suddenly like, oh, we can't. We knew we shouldn't have trusted them. I'm like, yeah, I knew that shitty suit. WWF in 1998. Fuck them. World wildlife. <laughs> fucking bitches. So no, trying to ruin the attitude there if you're bullshit. And uh, so now the problem is, is he's got this egg in the fucking cooler and it's attracting the graboids. Um, I think they just the ass blasters. The ass blasters. Oh yeah, you don't want to attack. Yeah, ass blasters <clears throat> are worse because they blast from their asses. And they take high C dicks aren't there yet. High C dicks aren't there yet. So they take the they grab the cooler. They take it, or the ass blasters grab the cooler and they take it to their lair, and they're like, "Holy shit! There's tons of eggs in there." They just deduce this. They pull it all in their head. They're like, "There's got to be tons of eggs in there." And at this point, Jamie Kennedy says, "I'll go in, Bert." I'll make you proud. You don't have to go. This is where it becomes a descent. <laughs> no, it didn't come to descent. This is straight up fucking pitch black. Yeah, it is. It is pitch black. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing got got me like because the ass blasters also see with infrared vision. So what does he do? He goes in there and lights a fucking flare. <laughs> was brilliant. I the That's only one do. that thought this movie was over at this scene? That this was supposed yeah, to be? Yeah, no, I did. I thought it was too. I okay, because it, it goes on for like thirty more minutes after this. <laughs> yeah, and you know, Bert gives him a white phosphorus grenade and is like, "Go blow all that up, and we'll be fine. We'll be fine." And he does it while simultaneously ripping off Pitch Black and Die Hard. There was a there was, there was like so a many, quote yeah. from Die Hard in there. Throws in the white phosphorus grenade. It goes off, comes out. There's another 30 minutes because now there's a giant pissed off graboid. Yeah. Mama graboid. Which, how they kill the mama graboid? Oh, that was, that was, that was, it goes back to a beginning scene where they put uh, the electricity, electric electricity okay, in, into the ground and it made the worms come up. It's something they, they, they call back to. So at this point, they get back to the, they get back to the main town. Shit's gone crazy. We didn't even mention what happened to the veterinarian and all the oh. ass blasters there. Or Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw. Terry Bradshaw. I mean, he's not Terry Bradshaw, but he looks just like Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> Tell me that the guy's not Terry Bradshaw. What's his name? You know who I'm talking about? The fucking blonde, the fucking helicopter guy. Oh yeah. If that guy's shit. not Terry we Bradshaw, we didn't even fucking talk about <laughs> the helicopter guy. Yeah, we didn't talk about. Do we have shit. time to talk oh, about the helicopter this guy? This entire we've fucking gotta, movie. We've got to mention this helicopter Terry guy. Terry Bradshaw, because this guy is Terry. Bradshaw. He's not even gonna look it up. He's just. Like, <laughs> I, mean, I can't remember the guy's point, name. It doesn't matter. Well, I'm just trying. Call him Terry. I'm just trying to get there. So Terry, the fucking Terry. helicopter pilot, Terry Bradshaw. <laughs> eventually, eventually, <laughs> they, that's how they get back to the town. That's how they get back to the the, yeah, the town. They, yeah, they they come back after like they fuck up all these things. He gets covered. You think he's dead? He, he does a bird. He gets eaten by the graboid and gets spitting back out because he's like, I guess he was full. I'm Terry Bradshaw, ESPN.com. And, it, and, it, and, it, and it's funny because he, like, he survives it and they get on this helicopter together and Bert's like, I've been there before. Like, oh, love to get swallowed. Which was weird because Bert called this guy and was like, hey, Terry come Bradshaw. get us. <laughs> hey, Terry Bradshaw, come save us. And he probably didn't mention fucking graboids because like his, his, his co-pilot gets eaten immediately yeah. and then he gets eaten. It's just like, you dick I, move, Bert. I thought you needed fantasy football. He's help finally a part. fucking asshole. So yeah, I, I they get wanted, out. They I, get out of there. Yeah, I just wanted to get that guy name drop because I realized we forgot him, and he's like a good chunk of the movie. He's about Terry Bradshaw. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> God damn. He was good. He was good. So they get back to the, they get back to the main part of the the, the town, and at this point, the fucking uh, the, the 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 main lady, uh, shit, damn it, You're Lucia, fired. Lucia, yeah. Uh, she, uh, the veterinarian, she uses her uh, bow and arrow and fucking kills, kills an ass blaster while almost, while almost, uh, castrating a dude. It, <gasps> it's really weird. But, um, uh, so yeah, the big, the, the big showdown, they decided, all right, we're going to, we're, we're, we're going to get this, 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 this big graboid. This is how we're going to get it. 
it oh, there's always lightning in the air. It always it always thunders at exactly I think it's like five fifteen every day, like clockwork. So they're like, all right, we're gonna fucking put poles in the air and put them in the ground, and we're gonna shock the shit out of this thing. But how are we gonna distract it? And Jamie Kennedy's like. I've got a fucking dirt bike here. <laughs> of course he does. I'll go do some sick moves on yeah. these dunes. Could get Kane hotter to ride this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll distract it. And you send up a fucking signal. And so that's what they do. And it works. And it works because he fucking zooms off. And her signal in broad daylight is shooting a flaming arrow into the air. I was like, how the fuck did he see that? Yep. Moving and that's what, magic. that's what kills him. Oh. Nobody gets fucked, so everybody comes back for the new one. Yep. The next one. Uh, and that, that's about it. Like that's Tremors 5 might be my least favorite, but it does have some fun parts in I it. Did, I did. I like this one way better than 6. You like it more than 6? Okay, I like yeah, it better six, than 6. 6 it, was fucking bullshit. Which, which we're jumping into right now. So, mm. Oh, and by I the like way, six, actually. one thing we can't leave out, going back to the Florida shit, at the end of Tremors 5, Jamie oh, yeah, Kennedy reveals that Bert... Fucked his mom, and that he is the son of Bert. Hi, he's, he's, Bert he's Bert's son, and yeah. he calls him pops. And he and calls Bert him doesn't... pops at the end, which irritates Bert. To um, no end. Right. He does, he does and that not continues like this. into part. And then we six. open with part six. We we open in like what fucking I, where are we at Iceland? Antarctica. Antarctica. It's, it's, it's ca Canadian Antarctica. That's yeah. what it says. Canadian. Yeah, I didn't Antarctica. understand that either. Tremors on ice. I, I, I Tremors don't ice, I don't understand why most of those people are just wearing like a fucking cardigan. Yeah. I know. And fucking. And then like most of the time it's just <laughs> yeah. like normal sand behind them in the background. Like, Absolutely, uh, they used a blue filter and oh. shot this in the desert. Fucking yeah. they did. This one opens with college students getting killed at the beginning. They're on ice. They're like, oh, it's really warm up here for there being ice everywhere. And then a grab boy shows up and just fucking kills them. A massive fucking, you know, and actually really good visual effects. Exactly. Yeah. I was going to say that. The visual you know, effects in this one are really fucking yeah. good. In, in, the, in number five and number in number six, like the, the grab boys look pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, I mean, they don't look like the original grab boys. They look sort of yeah. evolved in a way. But not but, even like just, I mean, like the actual visual effects, not the mechanical effects. The visual effects look fucking great. Yes. And this one I don't got too much to say about, man. I didn't. He's I didn't, wearing a fucking Cubs hat. How about we start he's with wearing, that? Okay. So they do go back to the <laughs> Sorry, hat. I know you hate the Cubs so much. There's I don't a, hate the Cubs. I just don't like change. So he's in the, he's reading. So <laughs> Bert's, just fucking. Bert's running chains now. So Bert runs it. Bert runs the store. He's decided to run the gift shop and the yeah. store and everything because he's the only human left in perfection. Nobody <laughs> fucking lives there. It's just him. He's the only person that hasn't been laid. The other 13 people are like, fuck <laughs> it. And Bert's like, well, but fuck Reba. And she left, which this gets brought up sometimes in this movie. His Many sex times, life comes actually. up a lot. Uh, this one, uh, Jamie Kennedy comes back. Who's he was apparently on like a five month binge or whatever. I don't know what the fuck that dude was doing, but he kind of looks back like it. And he's like, you don't look happy to see me. And I'm like, nobody looks happy to see you motherfucker. Like you're, <laughs> you're Jamie Kennedy, you're Jamie Kennedy. Nobody's been happy about that since 1998. Like fucking leave. <laughs> and he, he starts off with like calling him pops going like right where we left off with the last one. Bert's like, don't bring that shit up. I never wanted kids and you're a piece of shit. You don't really say that, but you know what he's thinking. Uh, then out of nowhere, just like part five, somebody not from the WWF worldwide fucking bullshit shows up and they're like, hey, you're the only one that can kill these things because apparently governments and things don't exist. They're too busy yeah. fucking hurting innocent we people. Can't use the we military can't and you forgot to mention that at the very, at the very, very beginning, uh, the, the, the fucking IRS agent or whatever is like, hey, Bert, we're taking everything uh, that you own in yeah. minute domain. So his worst fucking nightmare, worse than Graboids, the, the government. government has come in yeah. and take and taken everything from him. So he's losing everything. So he has nothing to lose. And then Jamie Kennedy comes in. I'm surprised he didn't shoot himself right there. Yeah, it's probably like, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it. It's just like, bam, bam, fuck God. all this. And that, that IRS shit comes up later. And it makes not a lot of sense. But this time around, they want them to go, of course, kill Graboids in this area. And once again, they want them to capture one. Always. Because they, now the government wants to yes. turn them into a weapon. They the, want to weaponize the grab boy. The DARPA. It took 20 years yeah. to DARPA. figure this out. DARPA. Yeah. Look it up. Look it up. There's lots of conspiracy theories about it that are... Yeah. Oh, like real ones? Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's even better. Which seems like if the government's getting involved in it this much now, they could have just did all this shit on their own. But they don't. They have Bert. No, they need him. We need him because we well, need to make they, We need Bert. Oh, they didn't know about the graboid. They 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 claimed they did. They, yeah. they they didn't seem like they were aware of the graboids at the time. Yeah. But so they're called up there by these these college kids. Yeah. And I got to mention some of the most fucking annoying characters in this series. Yeah, this are the, is the one. The well, yeah. that, like the the pilot Mac. Like what yeah. the fuck is that accent? I get it, it's supposed to be Canadian, but it sounds like a fucking cartoon. And this takes the same kind of dynamic, the group dynamic of the other ones, but everybody's annoying. So they still do the same thing as far as like the diverse group. 
Uh, this one does introduce Valerie as a callback to the first one because she is the daughter of Valentine, Kevin Bacon, from part one. And so they mention they mention that. They do times. mention that. And, spoiler, she fucks Jamie Kennedy. Spoiler, part seven's been announced. <laughs> Guess who's not in part seven? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. We are just spoiling everything and uh, the future. Just, just saying. So, 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 so Bert goes to the Antarctica and Canada and he gets, he, he goes with Jamie Kennedy. They fly up there with this annoying character named Mac. That's also a hooch runner. They get attacked by an ass blaster on the way. Yeah. And she's like, I don't know what's going on. And they're like, fucking ass blaster. It fucking flies into the plane because it's dumb and going after, (laughs) going after the heat source and they crash. They do crash, but they don't really like, crash. I mean, they just land. Yeah, you could watch. You Rough. watch. The, you watch the scene. And the fucking propellers going when they're landing the plane. <laughs> it is not even off. So they get there. Then, you, like I said, you meet Val, and they get the whole backstory. Like, hey, there's and Bert's like, yeah. this is bullshit. They can't can't be fucking ass blasters and stuff. They live in a fucking hot climate, and then that's when you find out that global warming has warmed everything up. So they were there at one point, and maybe they migrated down south. But now the humans have fucked everything up and now they're back. Now they're back in this area. And uh, I would have to say that things kick off just like you would expect them to. But my favorite fucking line from this whole series is in this. It's the part where this doctor is, is, is uh, he's, Bert, Bert runs out to try to save this doctor guy because he's, he's terrified and he gives him this pep talk. And part of the pep talk was, he's like, say behind me, my balls are in the Guinness Book of Balls. <laughs> I was just like, holy shit, that's a great line. I went with that in my own fucking epitaph. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. yeah. So next time you're feeling, feeling down about yourself, just say, my balls are in the Guinness Book of Balls. Look in the mirror. It's your daily affirmation from now on. And people this, like me. This is the grossest one, too. Cause this tries to do like a drag me to hell kind of like amount of like vomit and things. So yeah. there's a lot of like people getting puked on by the graboids. But it's all like orange. And, stuff. and it's all orange and gross and shit. Uh, they also, spoiler, they fake you out. This one did look like they were going to kill Bert off at first. Yeah. And they, he disappears they, for a bit. No, he's, well, got a, he's got a parasite in this one. Yeah. That he got, they, they established that he got it when he was swallowed by the graboid. And Tremors three. 3, which was like 12 years earlier. Yeah. yeah. Or something so, like that. 2001. 12, yeah. So, like, he's got this fucking parasite in him all this time. I don't fucking buy it. They get the okay, cure. Dave. They get the cure by, like, taking the, yeah, they have to, the they have venom to get, out of, or whatever the hell's yeah, inside they have, of they it. They have to get some, like, like anti, antibodies from it. But I don't buy it. Because Bert is a fucking paranoid motherfucker. That yeah. dude probably takes a stack of pills that all of our grandparents combined couldn't take in a day. Yeah. <laughs> like everything. So I don't, I, I don't buy sick, but whatever. It's a fucking, it's I just want to know the scene where he dies. Was the doctor just fucking with him, or does he actually die and come back to life? Because so, so Jamie Kennedy's character so walks in this room. Jesus yeah. With well, Rambo Jesus. Bert's in a hospital bed. The doctor's like, I'm sorry. He's gone. Everybody stands sad for like, I don't know, a minute. And as soon as Jamie Kennedy turns around to leave, Bert's like, what the fuck you doing, boy? No, he said, because yeah. he, he used the gun in an improper yeah, yeah. manner. Oh, yeah, you're not using and that gun, right? he came back. He came back from the dead, and he's like, what are you doing with that HK? Yeah, like out of nowhere. So, like, was the doctor pranking? <laughs> they were, they were, it's, it's a joke, and uh, It was a else? fucked up joke. No. <laughs> like, Bert was like, hey, I got a six sense of humor. I need all you guys to jump in on this. Fuck we're with gonna, my son who I We're going to fuck with my son yeah. who I absolutely I fucking don't despise like. this kid. Well, all right, so we, we we got a little ahead of ourselves. Now I'm letting you guys rip. <laughs> well, at, at, at this at, in this movie, uh, obviously this is there, as fast there, as we could possibly run run through these movies. There's possible, there, there's so. always Hit three. It, there's always three. <laughs> so there's three graboids. Um, at this yeah. point, you've got the DARPA goons that are fucking set up base camp like right across the road, and then you have the college kids that are right there. Yeah. You've got Val, which is or Valerie, which is Val's daughter. Um, and they get they get in the shit pretty quick. Um, also, I'd like to note, like if you can look at that fucking place and tell it's not cold. Look at those fucking I, windows. Yeah, they got everything. A, they got a fucking sliding glass. The door. beginning was good, and then it just was like, ah, eh, whatever. Nobody will notice. Yeah, they didn't. They they didn't care. But uh, so the the graboids start coming pretty quick, and everybody gets separated, and the uh, the DARPA people start getting murdered. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, just it. it there's the there's this annoying fucking character called Swasshammer. 
Swack it. Swack hammer. I like that, yours better. A swack, a swack hammer. This Swass dude, hammer. This dude is fucking awful, and I won't go into every reason, but basically they get this idea where they're going to create a grid. They're like, we can't stay in this building because it's just going to fucking tear it up. So they run to this this airplane hangar where the annoying fucking airplane lady is uh, trying to fix her fucking airplane. So they run in there, and they hook all this shit up and fucking swack hammer. <laughs> hooks it, he hooks it. He hooks it all up, and it creates an electrical grid so the trimmers can't get them. So yeah, they ended up killing one of the trimmers with that. You know, they 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 trick it into coming over to him with jackhammers and shit, and then they turn it on at the last second. This is the part that pissed me off. So this is the part. Oh, this is, no, this is we're, getting to the, we're finally angry. getting to the yeah, part. Yeah, here's right. the part that pissed me off. So they're like, all right, we got to make a run back to this building, and that swack hammer. Dick bag is like <laughs> I got this, and then there's like a fucking two minute montage of him out there like yeah, and fucking throwing grenades and shit like like yeah. dynamite montage. It was a montage that was unneeded. But at this point, the fucking I don't never had a montage. <clears throat> yeah, it's no. about time we only took no. them six movies. montage time. No, no, I'm I'm I'm, I'm, I'm not, I don't I, I don't need that. Part shit. six is always the best one, you know. <laughs> <Part six. laughs> I like Friday the 13th do, part 6. Do, 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 you want, do you want to help with some of the end of this? Uh, Man, really? Uh, so my, cap it up. my brain is so mush from all these Tremors movies. I, I know they capture it. So somehow they captured a the last grab boy. <laughs> yes, they and do it with a fucking plane and a hook. Yeah. And a fucking one of those little, one of those little uh, I don't know what it's called. It's got the balls on each end and the click clack. That's a great <laughs> click, fuck. Click clack ball set. <laughs> I don't. But it's one of those, oh one of those things you always see on people's desks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's, got the, it's got like the five balls like on it. Like what your psychiatrist has. Like, yeah. Like yeah. yeah. I don't know what the fuck something. it's called. Uh, so they trap this thing like that. balls. You know, and what pisses me off the most, I guess... Is like they use this thing as a trap to attract it, but fuck all the people that are running away from it at yeah. the time. It's gonna go right to this little fucking noise. Well, it did it's stupid? And Jamie Kennedy holds up a rope with a hook on it, with a little eyelet on it, and the fucking plane they get it. comes down to hit it. And as soon as the graboid, they they timed it perfect too. Graboid grabs it and they pull it into a fucking trailer. They capture it, and the whole gimmick was the IRS said that they would like uh, Bert would no longer owe anything as long as they capture it. For the government to use as like a weaponized and they, thing, and they they help so, that guy survive, and they help that guy survive. Cool. So, so they decimate the rest of the world. So but they, you get your IRS exactly. Yeah. So they agree to it, and they're all standing outside, and there's this giant fucking graboid in a cage behind them. Uh, the IRS hands him the papers. They're like, "Here you go. You did your job. You no longer owe a shit for the rest of your life. You don't have to worry about us ever." And Bert's like, "So we're good." And they're like, "Yeah." Out of nowhere, there's this little mechanical paper airplane, you know, a little model airplane <coughs> flying. And they're like, what the hell is that? Little drone. And Bert's like, pretty much like, ha ha, fuck you. And they drive the drone into the mouth of the trimmer and Bert pushes a button and the fucking thing blows up and guts go everywhere All their IRS guys. Jamie Kennedy goes and fucks Valerie, calls him pops. He's mad about it. You don't have to see Jamie Kennedy again anyway, apparently. And that's the end because he got fucking laid. Uh, that's the end of all the Tremors movies that have been out so far. But after that, we did get a pilot for a series that never happened that looked really good, starring Valentine from Part One, Kevin Bacon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also you, pro uh, produced by Sci Fi. Yeah. yeah. You can you can find that trailer on YouTube if you want to watch. We didn't it. talk about the game. Uh, there was a, there was a lot of well, there's a few games. There's yeah. like the Newgrounds game and a few different ones like the that. The Dust that came Dragons out. The original one. Uh, uh, yeah. There's so much yeah. little things that we haven't talked about, but it's been like almost two hours. Yeah. And then there's uh, there's the new Tremors, which is uh, I didn't know this when we were going into this called. Shrieker Island, which is right. going to be like a Jurassic Park style, apparently. With, with fucking Napoleon Dynamite. With Napoleon Dynamite and our friend Richard Brake that we talked about quite a bit on the last Rob Zombie. I can't oh. wait. I think out of anybody got the most compliments at the Rob Zombie crew. Yeah. It's probably Richard Brake. Well, so I'm, fucking, I'm fucking excited Richard now. Brake is the shit. So I think Richard Brake might be our goofy sidekick in this one that's probably not going to be too goofy. No, or he's going to be our Johnny bad guy. It's gonna, he's going to be the bad guy. Oh, Richard, Hitter, yeah, Richard, yeah, 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 Richard, yeah. Richard Brake's definitely going to be the bad guy that's like, I'll pay you to capture to yeah. kill them. Oh, he'll be the village I want you to capture them yeah. yeah and I think for a lot of you this this podcast was way more positive than you were probably expecting but these movies genuinely are a good time they don't take themselves seriously and watching the character of Bert grow from like that side character to like a main guy yeah. how do you it's like, like for me as a wrestling fan it's like watching like a fucking jobber become the champion so it's pretty fucking cool it's fantastic guys we're gonna wrap up this episode yeah. Uh, thank you all for tuning in. And uh, if you're on uh, fucking YouTube, please give us a like and subscribe. Please find us on uh, Apple iTunes, Google Podcasts, Anchor FM, CastBox, Spotify, TuneIn, Overcast, Podcast Addict, Radio Public, Podca uh, Pocket Cast, and Breaker. Avoid ass blasters, avoid those giant dicks with full of high C, and avoid uh, whatever those little shrieker fucks are, too. 
<laughs> Stay out of the fucking desert. Don't go to that town. Don't, Fuck it. Don't, don't, no, no, don't. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs> you definitely shouldn't go to perfection. There's nobody to fuck there. You guys were on a roll, man. I didn't let you go. <laughs>